bell so that anytime we upload a new video you'll be notified. Thank you. First of all, I give an honor to the place in the judgment of the universe, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Give me due respect to all the families of Israel. I bid you in the tongue of my father, Shalom Shalom Lakha. I got goosebumps. Mm -hmm. The very word of the Lord. The things that by which we live. We have goosebumps. Make you nervous. Supposed to. Yeah. That's the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Supposed to be afraid of God. And after a while, supposed to find some kind of love. And if you if, if if you respect a person, you have some kind of love for him. Uh -huh. And if you have some kind of love for him, you respect him. Yeah. And there's two ways about it. You 
No, we can't tell God short and give him rap. The words are cheap. Words go with work. You know, the work of your hands. God said, honor him with, with your substance and your increase. And when he says, uh, when he speaks of sacrifices, he says, offer the sacrifices of righteousness, which is of repentance. Sacrifices of your lips. You know? It's a, it's a beautiful day. It started off real nice. It's good to hear, brothers, that you know over the years that I've got this strong. But that's what it's all about. Strength not supposed to lie on one brother, and one guy is not going to know it all. You know what I'm saying? If he boasts about what he knows, he got little understanding. Because God said, don't boast of it. Mighty man must not boast of his strength. Right. Or even a man of knowledge boasts of his knowledge. Yeah. Or, 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 or the rich man boasts about his riches. Mm -hmm. So when you boast, boast about me. That I'm God that executes judgment and love righteousness. Yeah. And, 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 and keep covenant to thousands of generations. Mm -hmm. He keep, Today he's keeping his agreement. Once you see people that have not known pe each other for the last 10 years or never known each other. Gathered in a basement in 1619 Lincoln Place then you know God is doing his work. He's on his job. He didn't, he's not letting us down because he let the flow of knowledge out. So the knowledge is your salvation, and that's your boat to save yourself. You know? Ones that have been away and just coming in, you know, just coming back, returning, because you know how we is. They said, Israel is a backsliding heifer. Yeah. We back out, and you know what I'm saying? Just like that, we pull away and and, 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 and break out the crib. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Put your best foot forward this time around. Yeah. Because God said, he even said it, and he made mention as if he would do this twice. Uh -huh. He said, I'll reach out a second time, and I'll say to the north, give up. Yeah. And to the south, hold not back. Yeah. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. He said a second time, and God don't never miss. Yeah. 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 So that means the first time we blew it. Uh-huh. For sure. Because anytime he set his hands or his heart to do something, he don't never fail. We, he had the power of the spoken word. He said he made this. And in the end, he said it was good. Everything God made it was good. But we have our own thoughts <coughs> and our own ideas. Just like the brother said. The thing that the brother said, half of it sometimes come from his, their knowledge and inspiration. And half of it come from God inspiring them. Because he's going to talk to his people. Whether you know it or whether you figure it or not. God's going to talk to his people. Yeah. He's not going to just let us grope in the blind and look for answers. And look for answers that we can't find. He's going to talk to his people. The brother was bringing a chapter in Jeremiah. There's much more right behind where he left. To show you how many we ain't got no time to, to follow you around and play yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. This should come before TV, yeah. soap operas, yeah. movies, anything. Because the guys that got it now, that's how they pumped it up to get it. Mm -hmm. Day and night. We used to knock, I remember when I was young, I used to knock on knock his door. Because that's the guy with all the books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to the shower when everybody go home. I'd go by knock on it, and, and I was living in this building. And I'd go and knock on his door and borrow books and take them upstairs, read with him, and when I got got finished, I go upstairs and read some more. Yeah. That's how you're going to get it. You're going to pray for it and get it. Yeah. You're going to show effort and get it. Yeah. But you're not going to sleep and jive around and get it. Yeah. That's for sure you're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. I'll prove to you that, that it's right there. Right? That's not what I'm going to bring. But I'm just going to show one part, like the brothers in Paul was saying, you got to pray for it and ask for it. You ain't just going to get it by just coming in and, oh, because you hooked on a brother or you like to hang with this brother, you just come in here because you like to hang with that brother and your heart ain't set with father. Because mm -hmm. when you do that, you're going to do a lot of damage mm -hmm. with your ways and your mouth and God going to chastise you for it. You got a, you got a, 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 a inferior complex about what you did or because you stepped off. But when you come back, you got so much to say about this brother and right. that brother and right. the other brother. Right. And say a whisperer separate chief friends. Right, that's right. Say thou should not go up and down among thy people as a tale bearer. Right. Telling tales you don't even know if it's true. Right. And you're running your mouth. Right. 
or you signaling and signifying and pointing the finger because you sticking out. We know all them games and tricks. Yeah. Imagine if we know them. Imagine, you know, God got them down. God got you down. God got the spotlight on you. Amen, that's right. That's like when the CIA watching you. CIA don't watch guys that, that's in doing what the country wants. He watch your guys that's sticking out. So you watch yourself and watch what you say. And watch how you deal with people that have been your friends for years. Watch how you talk about them behind closed doors. That's what you need to watch. Because we all, like the brothers said, we're all in this thing together. And if we help one another, we might just make it. Hallelujah. Might just make it. Speak it Read out of German, same, same, same way, right, right where Levi left off. 13, Jeremiah 13. <laughs> Daniel 13. Daniel 13. Daniel 13. all the names mixed up today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 13. 9, 13. 9, 13. 9, 13. <laughs> Law go with history. You know, law go with history. You can you can't separate them. Because history is the transpiring of a time that a people live. And we have to see how our parents did it or how they transgressed so that we don't do it no more. You know what I'm saying? It inspi it's inspiring. Tell me. Uh Daniel 9, 13. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayers before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand our truth. That's the same with us now. So all this as is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yes, so yet we ain't made a prayer. Mm -hmm. We ain't made a prayer to, 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 to ask God forgiveness from our iniquities and understand the truth, which is the law. Subject. Therefore have the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, he do which it. he have do which he doeth. He didn't do it like, like a, out of wickedness. Don't she? But we obeyed not his voice. Mm -hmm. And now, O oh, oh Lord of our God, O oh Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and has gotten thee renowned, as at this day we have we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Uh -huh. O oh Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee. Let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because our, fa our, our sins and for the iniquity of our father, Jerusalem and thy people have become a reproach to all that are about us. That's just as it is this day. All the reproach of the people is on us. We're the lowest thing after we got such a great law. We become the lowest thing in the earth. But lo and behold, Israel is making a comeback. Yeah. Thump sheep. 17. Now therefore, O our, o our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine her eyes, and behold our desolation in the city which is called by thy name. For we do not, we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, righteousnesses, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thy own sake, O, o my God. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And while, while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning. He said, while he was praying and, mm -hmm. and asking, uh -huh. confessing for his people. You know, that means the, from he started, the angels was watch, the angel was watching him. Yeah. Gabriel came right next to him. Mm -hmm. And just you see opportunity to, to, to say something to him. Just at the right time. Just like the brother was saying. You got to ask for it and you got to pray for it. Daniel was praying for it. He was making supplication for all the sins that he knew that happened among his people. Uh -huh. 
It said at that time what? Because even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Yeah, the evening time when he was saying his prayer and making his oblation. Tell she. 22. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. There it go right there. Now you think we, we, we live uh, a dr in a dream world? But when we come up here, we, we speak our own word. Yes, the, the, the angel came, and he touched him and said, yeah, I heard you. I come to give you skill and understanding. And say, above all the doubt getters, get what? Understanding. It's all in a nutshell. See, if you pray for, maybe Gabriel might not come down and, and touch you and all that, because Daniel was one of the big guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But yeah. you might just get your prayer answered. Yeah. That's all you need. That's you it. don't need for him to come and touch you and give you it all that great honor. Yeah. But you might just be hurt. Yeah. So you better pray for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth praying more for gold and gold and diamonds and cars and yeah. all the things that you think that you like. Yeah. It's worth more than that. Hallelujah. You know? Friendship, brotherhood, yeah. it's worth more than all that. Yeah. A friendship that carry over the years, you should never taint it or even speak against that person. Mm -hmm. In no ways. Right. Pull his coat. Don't speak against him. Right. Don't get behind closed doors and criticize. But sometimes that's all we ever do. Right. Beat each other down with the law. Yeah, right. The law is not for that. No. The law is for to cause a man to incline his, his ears and think about bethink himself about the things that he do. Exactly. And it's not to be brought on, on a, in, a, in, a, in a deferred manner or in a manner that is not comely mm -hmm. because there are rebukes that are not comely right. and all the commandments is rebukes. Mm -hmm. If you think that I'm speaking my own words but we're going to go to Zechariah 8 now mm -hmm. and we're going to hear the direct letter to us from God. Not to us as a people in, in the 1900s. 1992. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1992. Okay. Uh, chapter 8. Like the brother was saying today, it was very inspiring, and especially certain things that you read about Jeremiah, you know, mm -hmm. and that show that we should, God said do the law, or, or certain things that we should do it on one leg. <coughs> And look, Father, I, that ain't no burden to me. I do it on one leg. Yeah. Do it with a willing heart. Yeah. Because the prophets went to went to hell. Yeah. They went to hell. <coughs> Jeremiah had to sleep on one side of, of, of it, God said sleep on your on your right side for fifty days. Right. And he couldn't. I mean, he, if he had, if he had a will to to sleep on his back, that his side hurt, he couldn't. He said, "Oh, fifty days shall account for years." That, and those shall be the captivity of my people, Judah. Uh, and says, sleep on your left side 390 days. Uh, uh, said, and every day shall be counted for a year. And said, that shall be the years of the captivity of my people. Uh, uh, he says, he says uh, uh, and another thing, go in the midst of Jerusalem and bake your bread. He said, mix it with dumb. Jeremiah cried out. He said, God, oh Lord, he said, for my, was, for my being a youth, he said, I've never ate anything that died of itself, or strange meat, or, or meat that's been torn by pieces. He said, like saying, don't do, don't let me do that. He yeah. said, okay, we'll mix it with cow dung. Yeah, man. Think you think they had a nice time? He said, mix it with cow dung. He said, because that was symbolical that he says, my people, they said, they're going to eat their children in the midst of Jerusalem. Mm -mm came back again and he told him and said, yeah, and the word of the Lord came to me again. He said, shave your, all your hair off and all your beard. That's right. He said, some of it, he said, throw it to the wind. He said, because I'm going to throw my people to, to the four winds of the earth uh -huh. and spread them all over the earth. Yeah. He said, and the rest, burn it. He said, because the sword and the famine will come and take two thirds of them. Yeah. He told him, burn two thirds of it and then all the third. Throw it to the wind. Yeah. Just like that, like magic. Yeah. Just burn it here and throw it to the wind. And look here, the, 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 the raiders is coming. Yeah, yeah. Just like that, the raiders is coming. 
to take us away. And you think they didn't come and take us away? So what the hell are we doing here? Then? Yeah. Our climate, our pigmentation don't go with this climate. Yeah. It's like it's like you see a, a polar bear walking down the street in the summer. Yeah. So what the hell is going on? Yeah. Something is mathematically wrong. Yeah. Polar bears are supposed to be somewhere in, in the north where it's surrounded by ice. Uh -huh. He all the way over here in, in, in let's say, uh, Hawaii, where it don't get cold. You know he's out of place. So if you think these things didn't happen to us, read. All you young sisters, don't get into no bags and, and novels and comic books. Read. Young brothers, read. Because if you get it this early, believe me, when you get about our age, you be steadfast. And God will notice you. That's what he called, that's what he told the devil. He said, look, you yeah, know yeah, this Job? Yeah. So you seen Job? I bet you he wouldn't sin against me. God wages on Job's hand. Yeah. The adversary didn't know he was going to win, like the brother said last week. But he waged on Job's hand. That's what you want, God. You want God to feel like he's almost sure that you won't turn away from him. You could do whatever you want. Fight, struggle, stumble, slip. But don't go away from him. Don't go away. Don't do sin presumptuously. We carry a banner and a light that people are watching. People are waiting for us to fail and say, I told you we would. And yeah. some of them is waiting for us to, to win. Yeah. Or to yeah. even see, see some kind of yeah. sign. And say, yeah. like, look, I've been chucking and jiving all these days. Let me get in the bandwagon with yeah, these yeah. people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let me hold yeah, on yeah. to his curse. Yeah. Because yeah. I know his God is with him. Yeah. All yeah. that is coming. Yeah. Give it time. Right. Yeah. It's coming. Trust me. God don't lie. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 1. Again the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. Okay, thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion. Say, I'm back, y'all. I'm back with you. Mm -hmm. And will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very, for very, very age. age. He's giving you a, what they call that, a coming attraction? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Coming attraction. Coming soon. Yeah. At a theater near you. Yeah. Dump sheet. Five. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus said the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in, in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, said the Lord of hosts. If you marvel at what you're hearing and what I just said, and so you know I'm a, it's going to be marvelous in my eyes too. Yeah. He's waiting for us. Yeah. This is his family. He said, he said oh, everything, everything that he made in the earth, he said only his what he got for his, for his everything. Out of everything that he made in the earth, it's like a man, look, look around at all that he made. And the only thing that he chose is a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Israel. Yeah. Tell she. Yeah. Seven. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east countries and from the west countries. I will bring them... I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of, of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be, be strong, ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets. Yeah, hold it right there. It says, Let your hands be strong, uh -huh. you that hear these words by the hands of the prophets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come sheep. Which were in which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. Yeah, it says the prophets that were that were in the days when our, we had our thing going. It says, hear the words from them. So these prophets wrote a lot of things for us in these times. Come she. Ten. For be, before these days there was no hire for men, nor any hire for beasts. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. 
For I have set all men, every one against his neighbor. Hold it right there. That show you. That show you the instinctiveness that black people have. They're against one another. He said, I set every man against his neighbor. He said, there was no hire. There was, there was nothing. We had nothing going on. Uh -huh. Tom 11. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, said the Lord of hosts. Said, but I'm not going to be to the, what's, what's remained or what's left for these people like I was in the days of old. Uh -huh. You know? He said, I've changed that. Just like he said in the in the beginning, starting out, he said, "I'm returned on the Zion. Yeah, I'm I'm back with my flock." And he gave us a, 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 a small synopsis of what's going to be in the future. Don't you? Twelve. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their dew. And, and I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. He says, "I'm going to straighten out the earth." I'm going to bring, flourish everything, but I'm going to let my, the remnant of my people yes. have that. Yeah. You know? Because we're the victims of circumstance. Mm -hmm. We, our fathers sinned mm -hmm. and went into captivity, and we're born in captivity. But we don't have to lay down in captivity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't have to make our stubborn heart lead us. Yeah. Let the book lead you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let your teachers inspire you. You know, you don't have to follow them to the letter like, oh, oh you, what they wear, what, no, 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 what they say. That's what's for you. That's what's for you. Yeah. Tell 13. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among, heathen, among the heathens, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Let your hands be strong. Here we go again. Strength of your hands from like, you know, you know you're not what you're supposed to eat, you eat that. What you're not supposed to eat, you don't eat it. What you're supposed to put on, you put on. What you're not supposed to put on, you don't put on. What yeah. you're supposed to say, you say. What you're not supposed to say, you don't say. Uh -huh. You know? It's that let your hands be strong. That's what strength is. Strength is in the hearkening to the commandments. That's what make a mighty man. It's physical and it's spiritual. Tell me. 14. For thus said the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not, so again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. And now, here come the instructions. He, Built you up, gave you hope, and told you what? That he's there. And he's back. And why and why he had left. And now he's here. Now he wants you to do certain things. And all of this is according to the law. Uh -huh. All these are uh -huh. commandments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. All these are commandments. Yes, it is. It ain't whether you like to or not, or how you feel about it. Right. It's a direct instruction. To us, the remnant that is left in these days. Some shit. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. So speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Don't speak folly to him. It didn't say speak about vanity. It says speak every man the truth. What's the truth? The law. What's the truth? The father. Yeah. It says speak every man the truth to his neighbor. Yeah. Not just us. The yeah. one next door. Yeah. That's right. Because we got the privilege, or we were granted the privilege to be awoke first. And I can bet you that somewhere along the way, our fathers is the one through it down. Yeah. That's why we got to pick it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. God, is, God is, 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 is even throughout. He's even throughout. He said, just weights and balance is my delight. He will not let the, 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 the children of the the ancestors that didn't have nothing to do with throwing down Jerusalem to come back and, and build it up. So why not? He knows us by name. He knows exactly who's out of which line. That's why he said, look, just, just put your hand to the end, but just work. Yeah. Just work. Don't worry about who you is and what you is. If you think you is who you think you are, on the borders of that garment, uh -huh. the fringes right around. That's right. Down south. Yeah. The same words you use in here again. 
Yeah. Now, when you run all this down, they're going to show you all, how all of us got a short arm and a short leg. Because we don't do these things. We don't do these things. Something. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gate. It's to execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gate. I mean, that's supposed to kill all arguments, right. all discussion, right. all ill feelings, mm -hmm. hatred, envy, mm -hmm. jealousy, right. all that's supposed to be dead. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because if you think if you think that the guy that that that's got to be a, 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 a role model has it easy, you're wrong. That's right. It's not easy to be a role model, <laughs> and all of us. Standing here today, sitting here today, we are role models. That's right. Some of us is role models amongst us, and all of us are role models among the heathen. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teach, Teach. That's right. They must not see you slack with no slackness, you know, okay. in a crowd pissing against the wall, mm -hmm. or with a skirt with a slip all the way down to your close to your 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 your, your underwear, right. or nothing like that. Right. Learn shame. Teach it to your kids from early. But God don't like that. It says, execute, execute the judgment of truth. The judgment of truth and peace. When you hear the truth, bow to it. God said, all knees shall bend and all tongues shall confess that I'm God. He said, even my people's knees don't bow, bend. That's right. You better get prepare your heart to right. start doing this. Because a lot of you, believe me, a lot of you that sit there naive and think that, well, oh, this is, oh, you got to, this is such a great sermon or yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a church thing or yeah. whatever. And then when you go out, you, have, you, you don't even remember or to keep it in mind what, what Father said to do. Look, we're going to wear a black suit for you. That's all. You're going to be, a, you're going to be gone. You know what I'm saying? They're going to make this big uh, a wooden suit for you, and you're going to be taken away. You know what I'm saying? Some of us might cry, you know what I'm saying? But you know what? The tears won't be for long. Because God don't do no unrighteousness. Hallelujah. That's right. 17. 17. And let none of you imagine evil in your heart against his neighbor. There you go. Let none of you even imagine evil in your heart against your neighbor. Oh, you're running it down now. Don't feel yeah. no way. He already knew what state we were yeah. in in 1992. Yeah. And he wrote us a letter. Yeah. He wrote us a letter. Yeah. And there's it, it, many more letters in there. But he'll let you run into it when he get ready. Oh, everything is running in, in this time. He said, I, the Lord, shall go before thee. So it will not be in no haste. God does not deal in haste. He could have rushed it and made the earth. He made it in six days and rushed it in seven days. He said, it, it, he called it his rest. He said, the Shabbat of the Lord, thy God. Yeah. And you know what? The sign being the Shabbat, that's the hard sign. Mm. Say there's a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Year two thousand. Yeah. The year three thousand. Yeah. It's a, that's the hard sign. Break it down. If you don't keep that, you're not with it. If you don't keep that, you're not with me. So that's my hard sign. You show that you're with me when you rest on this day. The rest will come. He knew in 1992 we would have books open. And on the Shabbat day, instead of every man being that there was no, there ain't no temple, you can't go to the temple and offer no oblations and then go back home. You'd have to come and sit and learn. Right. Learn to fear God. Mm -hmm. Learn to do His ways. That's right. Life come with instruction. Yeah. Everything come with instruction. Yeah. You cannot live life on your own or by your own precepts. Yeah. That's why God said, lean not to thine own understanding. Right. Hallelujah. You're going to get the commandments, but to fulfill your understanding, you got to read past the commandments. You got to read. So the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So when you when you start thinking wisely, then you start giving God his purpose. That's when your, your head start balancing out. All oh, the rest of the people that are out there, they're like a satellite out of control. 
because they don't communicate with the tower. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They do not communicate. Therefore, they get no messages. They don't get no warning. They don't get nothing. We get it all. Hallelujah. And you know what God said? He said, he complained about that. He said, you caused me to serve with your sins. Serve. Servant. That's the highest order. The highest order in the earth is to serve. That's the biggest, biggest order Moses could have got. He got big props. He said, Moses, the servant of the Lord. You know what it is to be the servant of the Lord? Yeah. I mean, look, look, you can't buy that. Yeah. You can't buy that. God said, you called me to serve with your sin. I mean, he served us. Even when we don't deserve certain things, he still give it to us. He said, well, you know, 10 years and, and he ain't come up to par yet, but um, that's because he's been waiting this long, you know? I'm going to throw him a little something. Totally but uh, it's, not, it's not that he's ready, but, uh, yeah. you know, my mercy is my mercy is my mercy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't think like man. Yeah. I think, I think uniquely. You know what I'm saying? Tell me. And love no false oath, for all these are things that I hate, said the Lord. 18. And the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness, cheerful feast. Therefore love the truth and peace. Yes, and all them fasts that you do now, they're gonna work. They're gonna be worth some to me. He said they're gonna be for joy and gladness, cause it's only one fast that he declared. Yeah. The fast of the seventh month. Yeah. All the fast of the fourth month is on your own because you need it. The fast of the fifth month is on our own because we need it. Fast of the tenth month is on our own because we need it. The fast of the seventh month is prescribed. Hallelujah. You see, he don't burden you and say, "Well, you gotta fast." Six times a year. That's one time because you know at times that we we're gonna be so weak that a fast is a burden. Mm -hmm. A fast. Which if you were in jail, you would have to fast anyway. Because mm -hmm. you're not gonna eat that slut. Mm -hmm. So how about a fast to to get rid of sin? Mm -hmm. When when will the young men or the young woman think about these things? And say, you know what? I'm gonna go on a fast. And I'm gonna try this to 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 expiate some of my sins and and lighten up myself, you know, and 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 come closer to the Creator. Yeah, that's your family. Mm -hmm. Even though He's not made of flesh and blood, but He made us, and He made us as close as He could make somebody to Him. It said to His image and likeness. Can't get no closer than that. And beside making us like that. After making everything that he made, he chose us. He said, this is my family. Yo, I told Abraham, he said, he said, walk the breadth of the land. He said, wherever your feet touch, he said, that shall I give thee for an inheritance. That's right, in Genesis. And later on in Exodus and, 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 and Judges and, and all that when Joshua and them ran and was taken, the same place Abraham walked. I show you that God don't, don't, don't care. He don't, he, don't, he don't give his word and, and change. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm a God that changes not. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. That's right. He said, that's why I don't yeah. kill you out. Hallelujah. He said, because I don't change. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Everywhere Abraham walked, Joshua, David, all of them conquered it. They conquered it and took it. And it was their land. Mm -hmm. Just like God said it would be. Mm -hmm. He didn't say it's, it's going, it's, it would happen by magic. No. We had to fight for it. We had to campaign. But it was ours. The word was kept. Something. 20. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another and say, Let us go speedily to pray. Pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. Yes. I, I will go also. That's right. He said, yet it will come to pass that the inhabitants of one city, not Jerusalem, uh -huh. it could be Spain, mm -hmm. or France, or England. He said, look, let us go up to the house of God. Let us go up to Jerusalem. 
It said, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. The God that they were seeking them times, we have in me already. We have in me already. He inspired us. He feeds us. He looked out for us. He covers us. He gets us out of jail in peculiar ways. He sends us warnings. Wake up. This thing is in full, full flesh. Believe me. This boat's going so fast, if you blink one day and, and open your eyes in, in another moment, and you might don't see nobody. The way this thing is going, you might not see nobody. That's it. 22. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. There are many people and strong nations. Something. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold of one language, or of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirts of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Now for him to do that, kind of hear and see signs. Yeah. That's right. God going to beat them to pieces. Until they accept yes, yeah. who the scepter belongs to. Yes, sir. And who are the ministers before him. Yes, sir. And these are things that is so frightening that we should all start thinking about getting rid of our messed up ways. Yeah. Yeah. And all the hypocrisy. You know? Because I'm telling you, look, this thing is is worse than the CIA. Mm -hmm. You whisper something, and if you whisper something, about somebody, and God want him to hear it, look, the guy who could be your eighth school, eighth man, he gonna come and warn you and say, you know what, so and so, so, such and such and such. But if you're a man of understanding, then you don't put no, no heat to it. You know what I'm saying? All that show you is that your people still got yet to learn. Right, right. It should never disenchant you, or it should never damp your morale. Right, right. Because all these things gonna happen. Right. And on, a, on any given day, the devil get the best of us. And he caused us to speak unpleasant things. And do and say unpleasant things. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know? But we must keep all that in remembrance. And remember that our whole job is to save our own soul. <laughs> While as a family, a father or a mother, we got to teach it to the children and institute it and teach it diligently. After that, you can do no more. You can do no more. You can only save yourself. Because that's what that's what God said. Isaiah, Moses, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, any one of them was in these times, they could only save themselves. So when you accustom yourself for a brother to carry you, or the feast day coming up, and he gotta go get your meat, and he gotta go get your matzo, and he gotta get this. What is you doing? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Make him understand. What is you doing? You think somebody can do this for you? You got to sit at the bottom of your own tub. When you go to judgment, you're not going with nobody beside you. You're going by yourself. And nine times out of ten, you ain't going to be able to say nothing. Because this, this saying back to or saying something, you have anything to defend yourself, all that happens on the earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All that happens in the earth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because they don't, have, they don't have all the evidences. Yeah. But all. The evidence is on us. Yeah. It's in the heavens. That's right. When we get there, you don't need to say a damn thing. <laughs> That's right. They're going to speak for you. That's right. And they might say, well, like, look here, because you did this and because you did that, and you were a good example in the earth. That's right. And we know what you, all the, all the other things you do, but you know what? Go over there and rest. You know what I'm saying? You failed. Look, I, I don't even, you, you can picture it. Let's picture it. The worst horror movie you ever seen. And that's what's for you. Dig that. And ain't no time to repent then. All your repentance, you got to do it now. Repent means to change your ways. To mend your ways. If you're a blabbermouth, shut up. If you're a whisperer, shut up. You know, if you repay evil for good, then switch. The same respect that we demand from the, from the children to the parents, the same respect the wife must have to the husband. 
Because they're, they're both commandments. They both are commandments. Because he wanted an order. No well, one day the, the woman could get up and say, no, 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 I'll do you, you sit down, let me talk to her. you. You, you, this and this and that, and I'm this and that, and you, no, no, don't go like that. Teach, Those teach, are emotions. Teach. We don't deal with emotions. We deal with the truth, and we deal with how things are set up. There you go, all. You know? Like I said, this, this is a blessed day. Hallelujah. It's a good day to elaborate, to talk, family talk, because this is family yeah. talk. Yeah. You know? Definitely. All the things that happen, I mean, ain't nobody saying, I hate this guy because he said this. Yeah. All we say is, don't say it. I don't hate you for whatever you have said against me or another brother or a sister or whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we're all sick. We all need Definitely. this. Definitely. Our neighbors out there, those are the, that's the heathen. The heathen are us. We're the same people. Just that we're looking at them in the predicament that we were in at one time. Uh -oh. So they require silk gloves. Yeah. Teach, teach, teach. They require a, 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 a keen surgery. Yeah. Then you do a surgery on them, you just going. Uh -oh. You know, yeah. slip, 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 slip. Take your time. Let your jo doctrine drop as the dew up on the tender herb, just like Moses said. Uh -huh. Let it come down easy. Before they know it, they in. Before they even know it, they in. Mm -hmm. You know, before they know it, they they drawing a little like liking to you. Yeah. Before they know it, they look up to you. Yeah. And once they start looking up to you, it's almost all over. Because if they look up to you, they're gonna follow you. And they're gonna do the things that you tell them to do and the things that you show them to do. Teach. This ain't a wild thing. This thing is done with a science and then with a certain order. You know? Because we're all gonna need a little help one day or another, even the teacher needs a little pumping up at times. Right. You know what I'm saying? He gets a little corrosion and he needs a little wire brush to brush some of the rust off. You know? I know at least one thing you should never say out your mouth that I can't do this. Yeah. Or you could say it's hard, but don't say I can't do it. Think that. That's rebellion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if you hear the voice of, of reproof, which is the way of life, that's all the way of life is about. Reproof. Reproof is instructions. You know, don't do this, don't do that. When you hear it, and you know you're sticking out on that particular thing, the brother telling you, just bow, man. Just bow. That's what God waited for. I want you to bow and confess and accept every word that he run to you. Because it's him sending it to you. It's not man. We didn't write this. This is not our inspiration. We get inspired to bring you the word in a certain manner so that you it will be lifted up. You know, so it will wake you up. So you will realize where you're standing at at this present time. You know? With that, I hope you all got some out of this. There's a few more, but it's coming to the break, you know? And maybe I get another chance to, to bring the rest. That I bid you in the tongue of my forefathers, Shalom Aleichem. One of the things that we will have to understand before we can really get this nation moving, very important that we learn to have some wisdom, some and some understanding. What's our goal? Talk about it.
of eternity. I don't know him any more than you do. But boy, oh, do I respect him to the highest. I want you to know that when I am speaking to you, and I'm speaking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Israel. And I don't mean to be hard or harsh, but anyone who is sitting in the sound of my voice and say, well, I don't believe what they say. I don't care. How do you like that? <laughs> the reason I don't care is not because I want to be mean to you, but I want to be good to everybody that do. <laughs> you may get on the ship sooner or later before it's safe. Oh, 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 oh,
Asa decha yachwa Teshuat chakein vratecha Ve'ene chorfi davar Ki vatachti vidvarecha Ve'al tetzel mi pidavar emet admiyot Chile mitzvatecha yechalti Ve'esh mera torat chatamit Le'olam v'ayeh Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sing it for him. Sing it for him. Ba'uni hasadecha yachum. Teshuat chakim radecha. Ve'ene chorfi daba. Kivatachti bitvarecha. Ve'al tetzel mi pidavar emet admiyot Chile mishpatecha yechalti Ve'esh mera torat chatami Le'olam Hallelujah, 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 ha, 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 Thank <laughs> to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that anytime we upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you. I heard like... Thank you. Thank you, mother-in-law. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, the most high king of the universe. Praying, um and giving glory to the Most High God for our lives. I'm um, always thankful to the Creator for um, protection, for guidance, for um, getting me here safely. And I'm grateful to the Most High King for 
the joy of the Shabbat day. The Shabbat day is it's a joyous day. And, and having joy in the Shabbat day, we, we glorify the king and we give thanks to the king for, for this time and this season and this understanding. I just want to give glory to the most high God because we sometimes take things for granted. We take um, day-to-day life granted. We think that we're going to get up in the morning. We think that we're going to, that life is just going to go on, but everybody has a, a born day and everybody has an expiration date in my right home. And we can't tell when that expiration date is going to be. Sometimes it might come through sickness. Sometimes it might come through an accident, an event that happens in our lives, but we must continue in our lives. Am I right or wrong? Because life continues. It doesn't stop. So some of us have, have lost parents at a young age. Some of, of us have lost parents. Your parents sometimes outlive the children. But nonetheless, life continues. And in life continuing, we must give the Most High God his glory, regardless of what happens in our life, because he is the one that allows us to continue in life and gives us the blessing of life to continue. Understand what I'm trying to tell you because the Most High God points it out to each and every one of us and he makes us all see when we wake up in the morning that he's given us another day and another blessing. Every day above ground, like Ema Sarah saying, I miss her so much, I haven't seen her in almost a year, but every day above ground, it's a good day because some people did not wake up this morning, but Find yourself to be blessed and give God his glory. That's right. Give God his glory. Because when we look at life, you know, the doctors tell you certain things. They tell you, you know, this is hereditary. You know, they tell they tell women certain types of things that happens are hereditary because their mother had it or that. So they, you got to get yourself checked out and. And heart disease and uh, heart disease and all that stuff is a it's a it's a byproduct of what we've been eating for years. Your grandmama's recipe, your grandmother's grandmother's recipe that been passed down for years. And then you wonder you come into this way of life and you stop eating all eating all the stuff that you've been that your family been exposed to, and then. You're not suffering from the same things that your family is suffering from. You don't have heart disease. You don't have failure. You don't have rheumatism and arthritis. And you don't have any of those things. Why? Because you have changed your DNA and you have changed your way of living from the way that your family, that family recipe has been killing your family for years. You got all types of fat back and all types of stuff in that family recipe that's been passed down and it has the same effect on your body that it had on Uncle Lou or Uncle Earl. And it breaks down. But now the Most High God gave us a Torah. He told us how to eat. He said, don't eat this. He said, don't eat with the fat. He said, don't eat with the blood. So now your whole DNA is changing up. and no male in your, in, your, in your family live past 55. You up to 65. And you strong. You said, well, so that y'all yeah, made it to 65. Now you 75. You the oldest person in your house that ever lived past that. Why? Because you ain't using grandmother's recipe. With the pig drippings and all types of stuff that takes you up out of here. The recipe calls for, for, for two pounds of butter. They got some recipes out there that, that boy, they call for about two pounds of butter. Be like, goodness gracious, how can you survive this? After this, your arteries need a vacation. They need about a year vacation because they got to work overtime. But this is the stuff that we have to be thankful for because the most high God has given us a change of life. Think about how much more McDonald's you would have been eating. 
Think about how much more Burger King and how much more uh, Bojangles and all types of junk you would have been eating if you didn't understand this. I haven't eaten McDonald's in 30 years. Over 30 years. Told I ya. Told I ya. We used to go to school and they used to give them the street run. And we used to call it, um, what was it? Murder burgers and suicide fries. Ain't know what you was eating. No, we used to start food fights, start... Now, everybody poor, but you got the nerve to have a food fight. <laughs> you know, when you go home, you might not have anything to eat, but you 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 oh, want to fit in. Yeah. You be on the way home, you got somebody who parents might have given them a little extra, and they go into the store, get a hero, you be like, yo, bust me down, son, bust me down. <laughs> and either you want a piece of the hero sandwich or the sandwich that they have. But those are all the things that, that destroyed us. Those are all the things that continue to destroy us to this day. Because we are holy people. The Most High God created us are holy people. So therefore, when we look at ourselves, we look at our bodies, our bodies is like a temple, like holiness. So all you can put in there is good things. If you begin to put the wrong things in it, that's going to begin to mess you up. I was in, I was talking to this old man. So he has a beachfront house. He live in the light, by the way. He got beachfront house. He said he don't, he's funny. He said he don't clean nothing. He hired people to clean his house. He said, I don't even, he said, I don't got running water. He said, my running water is the ocean. Mm. He said, I run in there once a day. I get underneath the water. I stay underneath there for about a minute. Hold my breath. That's for my lungs. That's my exercise. He's like 75 years old. He said, I get underneath the water. So I do it at least three times, get underneath the water. This is the Caribbean Ocean. He comes back up. And then he said, he said, I eat healthy. I don't eat no pork. All I eat is what comes out of the sea. So then he started talking and he said, you know, he went to the doctor. And the doctor said, yeah, your cholesterol is high. He said, nah, that's impossible. All I eat is what comes out the sea. He said, you know what I eat all day? He pulls out, it's, it's called a langoustine. It looks like a, like a, it looks like a lobster. It's like shellfish, like part of the shrimp family and something like that. So the doctor said, yeah, that's what's killing you. Mm. An unclean animal of the bottom of the sea that's built to eat up all the doo-doo is what's killing them. He said, yeah, your cholesterol is high because you're eating shrimps. You eat this, that stuff is no good for you. The doctor told him that. Mm. So the I say that to say this, that the laws of God are perfect. Because even in the sea, people might look and say, in the sea, I'm safe. Yeah. But you can't, you don't have to be safe in the sea. So shrimps and lobsters and all those things are things that will kill us. And the doctor told him, your cholesterol is high because you're eating that. That's not what you're supposed to be eating from the sea. So this is the God that we serve. He gives us understanding. And sometimes we question what, why he said things or why he did things. But why do we question? He's the one that made it perfect. So we give glory to the Bosai King. We give glory to this mighty King. I'm grateful to this God, man, because he, he has allowed me to see um, blessings. Even the, the good and the bad and all things you learn. And we give glory to the Most High God. We must never fret of the times that come. Because the Most High God is the one that presents it to us. And he never gives us more than what we could be. That's who God is. And that's who, um, you know, it says, it says, cast, cast your bread into the water said because it will return to you meaning it's a form of alms giving alms giving is like giving to the poor giving to the needy help out someone when they're in need look out for someone when they're in, in, in need of something because god will never fail you the creator will never fail you. he will always return it to you it's important for us to understand these things and to know 
Torah and who we are as God's people, godly people. This is what we do. This is what godly people do. We have understanding of Torah and we walk in it. What's the sense of us um, living and, and reading this book and, and living in it and not walking in it? Grasping the understanding of it. This is, this is what causes us to go reprobate or go backwards. Some of us is doing it by rote, meaning that you come here because your parents bring you here. You come here because you have camaraderie with some brothers and sisters, but it's not really in your heart. But for us to, to, to really get the benefits of Taurus, we got to begin to live it. It has to become a part of us. You have to live it. You can't half step this. Because as we used to say back in the day, say your slip is shown. Meaning you're exposing yourself for what you really are. So therefore, young man, young woman, adult, when you, when you hear this, walk in it. Understand it. Get the understanding out of it because if you don't get the understanding out of it, you're on the, you're on the path to destruction. Look at the world. Look at the condition of the world. That's right. And I'm not even talking about politics, but look at what you see on TV and what's acceptable. Mm. A couple of years ago, a man won woman of the year. That's what's acceptable. An ugly one, too. But he won woman of the year. How does a man know how to be a woman? Do he go through... Um, a menstrual cramps like y'all do? Do he know what it is to um to bear a child? Does he know how to um he does he know how to the, how it feels for a woman? He doesn't know that, but he won woman of the year. So that's the world we live in. The world we live in is they show you, you know, everybody wants to be a star, so you got people doing whatever it is that they want to do before the world, and it's acceptable. But there are certain values and principles that we all must live by. Men as well as women. Children. You always must respect parents. Uh -huh. That's part of God's law. It says honor, right? Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You know what honor means? Honor entails a lot of things. Respect, fear, commitment. Honor means when you go to school, you don't bring home bad grades. When you go to school, honor means when your parents talking to you, there's no talking back. Your, your parent might give you an opportunity to say, well, let me hear what you have to say now. Let me hear what you have to say now. But honor means a lot of things. You have to respect. Fear, revere, and understand what is it that the Most High God wants us to do as God as His people. God is great. We give Him glory. Let us go to the portion of the Togo, which is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 19. Togo means what? Generations. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Yitzchak. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Aramean, to be his wife. So in the last portion, we see that Rebekah came all the way from, from, from Padan Aram. Uh, the servant of, of Abraham went over there to go get her. Because he did not want his son to marry any of the daughters of the land. Why is that important? You don't want your son or your daughter to marry any, any and everyone. Right? You want your son and your daughter to marry someone that has the same thought, that has the same mentality, that has the same know-how that you do. Because you do not want to raise up grandchildren that's going to be celebrating Christmas. That's right. That's going to have tattoos. Mm -hmm. That's going to be eating pig's flesh. Mm -hmm. 
that's going to be doing any and everything because they're going to drive you crazy. That's your generation. So therefore, Abraham safeguarded himself and sent all the way back home to get someone just like him. Because we can't live with these um, daughters of heck. And I can't, and I can't, I don't know how I will survive if my grandchildren come out with these, um, with these daughters of heck and doing the things that they do. So when you see your parents and you come around and you bring in some old, as they used to say, Bessie, or you bring in some old scallywag, or you bring in anything home to mama that's not acceptable, or to your Abba that's not acceptable, know for sure that you're bringing grief to them. Mm -hmm. You got to bring acceptable people. Let us go. And Isaac entreated Yehovah for his wife because she was barren. She was barren. She couldn't have children. Let's go. And Yehovah let himself be entreated of him. Uh huh. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Whatever he did, he might have. He might have gave offerings. He might have did certain things to to gain the the favor of the Creator in order so that he would listen to him and open up his wife' womb. Because I mean, that's the desire of every man and every woman when they get together. You know, after you get all the formalities out of the way, you want to have children. You got what I'm saying? You want to have children. So having children is a precious thing, right? You got many women out here that can't bear children, right? But we also have to understand that we live in a society that promotes the killing of children. Mm. Especially amongst our people. You don't even know it that you've been, that, that we've been programmed as a people that as soon as you, you conceive, and you have a child in your womb to go murder it. But that's the society we live in. So a lot of times, it's not your fault. It's what you've been programmed to understand. Because child and ch children and a child is precious. That's a precious life. And when you could, you could bring life into the world, you should be appreciative of that because you got people that cannot even do it and are struggling to do it. So we got to give all glory to the Most High God for, for being able to, to be able to do things like that. That's a blessing. Let us go. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, wherefore do I live? And she went to inquire of Yehovah. And Yehovah said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two people shall be separated from thy vow. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. And the elder shall serve the younger. So she was having a, what you call a, a troubled pregnancy. The children were struggling within her, even in the womb. And she went to God and said, man, you made me wait these 20 years for this to start happening to me? Well, I'm going to die? And the Most High God said, listen, you have two nations in your womb. And they struggling from within the womb. He said, but the elder is going to serve the younger. So that stuck with our mother, Rebecca, for years. This is what she understood, and this is what she knew. And she kept this in her mind. Let us go. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. There were twins in her womb. And the first came forth ruddy, uh -huh. all over like a hairy mantle, and they called his name Esau. So the first came out hairy and ruddy, like a hairy mantle, and they called him Esau, which means hairy. Right from uh from um Sa'ar or something like that, which means um hair. Right? So they just named them Harry. Let's go. And after that came forth his brother, and his hand had a hold on Esau's hill, and his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Let's go. And Isaac was three score which years means old. Which means a supplant or a supplanter. Let's go. Isaac was three score years old when she bore them, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. And Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. So three score, a score is 20 years in biblical time, 20 years. So being three score, he was what, 60, 60. years old, mm -hmm. right? And he married her at 40. So it took them, it took them 20 years in order for this child or these two um, children to come into the earth. Let's go. Now, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca loved Jacob. And Jacob saw pottage. And Esau came in from the field and he was faint. Esau said to Jacob, 
Let me swallow, I pray thee, some of this red, red pottage, for I am faint. So Isaac loved, Isaac loved, the father loved the son that was the sports guy. Mm -hmm. That go out there, go hunt. To go out there and make a woman for himself. The father naturally went, when, when the father has a son that could play basketball, he just, oh man, that's my son. Now you, you love all your children, right? But there's some, like if you were a basketball player, you go, man, that man, that, that, that boy right there looking good. Look how he go up. Look how he dunk. Look how he does all these things. So that's what he looked at at Esau. Esau was a hunter. He could provide. He was strong. He had the look. So he loved him, right? It didn't mean that he didn't love um, Jacob, but it's just that Esau was that son that he could bond with, he could go out there with, he could do certain things with. And that's what it was. Jacob was more a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. He stuck next to his mother. Right? And it didn't mean that Rebecca didn't love Esau. It's just showing that, yeah, sometimes I, I hang a little bit more with this one because he does things that kind of interest me a little bit more. Or he's, it's like Kobe, right? Kobe, may the most high God bless his memory. Look at the daughter that was closest to him, was the middle child. Because she took on the things that Kobe loved to do. She showed the interest. So it didn't mean that Kobe didn't mean oh, didn't love all four of his kids. But that daughter right there, she was picking his brain. She was, come on, Abba, let's go. Come on, Dad, let's go. Dad, let's go outside. Let's play ball. Dad, let's do this. Dad, let's do that. That was that daughter. So he spent more, naturally, he spent more time with her because it was the same interest that they had. This is the same thing with Esau and with um, and with Isaac as well. Let us go. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said... And Edom means what? Red. Let's go. Edom. And Let's Jacob go. said, sell me first thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I'm at the point to die. And what profit shall the birthright do to me? So remember what, what um, Rebecca knew from the beginning. That there was two forms of nation within her womb. And that the oldest shall serve the youngest, right? So she's been training the youngest who was closer to her to get that birthright. Mm -hmm. You got to get that birthright because that's yours. He's supposed to serve you. That was her mentality. This is what she thought in her mind that this was the thing that she had to do. Because God already has spoken to her and told her that the oldest shall serve the youngest. And since the youngest is always next to me. I'm going to fill his head with this. So now, when Esau comes back from the field, he comes back faint, like he's going to pass out. And his brother, Jacob, is making a pot of stew. Mm -hmm. Red stew. With some lentils and some beans or something in it. Right? And Esau is like, I'm famished. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Feed me. I'm famished. And what he says? Jacob said, Swear to me first. Uh huh. And he swore to him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. So he disregarded his birthright. Right. His birthright meaning he's the firstborn. Whether or not they were in the same womb at the same time, he came out first. It's like we got a set of twins here. We got Jermaine and Jeremiah. Which one is the oldest? Jeremiah. He's the firstborn. Right? Regardless of whatever, whether he came out five minutes before or Two seconds before, he's the firstborn. So Jeremiah is the firstborn. Jermaine is the secondborn. So that's the same thing. Esau is the firstborn. So he gets the rights of the firstborn. Right. Let us go. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. So Esau despised his birthright. So for a, a, a bowl of stew of lentils, he sold his birthright. Right. He despised it. He let it go. Let us go. Chapter 26. Mm -hmm. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto get off. And Yehoah appeared unto him and said, Go not down unto Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all these lands. By thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed themselves. 
So God told Isaac, don't go down to Egypt like your father Abraham did. You stay in the land of Canaan, right? Go by where the Philistines are at. Now, Philistia, or, or um, the land of the Philistines, is right alongside of the, um, it's on the western border of what we know today as Israel. And the Mediterranean Sea is right at the, at the edge of it. So God is telling um, Isaac, he said, look, don't go down to Egypt. I want you to go down. I want you to go down to the land of the Philistines, Gerar, and you dwell there. Although there's a famine, I don't want you going down to Egypt. Let us go. So Isaac followed the Most High God's instruction. Let's go. Because that Abraham hearkened to my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Uh -huh. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. But he feared to save my wife, lest the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she is feared to look upon. So now, where, so, so, so where did he get this idea? Did we see this before? Who did this before? Abraham. Abraham, right? He said, when you go down there, tell them that you are my sister. Right. Now, in ancient times, they'll rather kill you than commit adultery. <laughs> So they didn't, murder was okay. Adultery was low toe. <laughs> so they'll take your head off right. and then take your wife. But to commit adultery, they didn't want to do that. Right. So why is it that today adultery is like nothing? Mm. Why is it that today that people really commit adultery? You go to work, you work in a nine to five, you had a job. You got a husband, you got an each that works so hard. As they say, bring home the bacon. Mm. Work hard, bring, pay the bills and do all that. But you at work with some dude that don't care nothing about you. And you with that dude, but your husband is at, at work, working hard to bring home Whatever he has to do to come home and take care of you and the children, but you so easily commit that act. That's why there's a penalty for that act. Right. And how is it so freely today that guys could just lay with some so someone else's woman when back then a man would rather kill you? A man would rather kill you than to lay with her while she was your wife. I know it sounds crazy, but that is the the um, the the sanctity of marriage. Unless you get that bill of divorce, you cannot move on. Unless you get that bill of divorce, you got to move on. You got to get that bill of divorce. Adultery is adultery, and you have to be, and you have to understand. What the Most High God is telling us and the penalties that come with committing these acts. People don't like to hear about it, but it's true. And you can't put yourself in predicaments that's going to cost you to take that route. So you stay away from things that will cost you to take that route. We were taught very young to stay out of people's um, um, wise faces. We didn't do too much talking with other people's wives. When we were young, we were taught. Don't talk to people's wives. Don't talk to people's daughters because eventually you're going to violate. And sisters, you don't open up yourself to fall into that predicament. Next thing you know, you start telling all your business to some other man and you don't even know why, why you're telling your business because that's a, a natural connection. Man and woman connect. That's what happens. Man and woman connect. Why do you think when they go on movie sets. Why do you think most of the adultery happens on movie sets? You away with some dude for five months shooting a movie, but you married. He's married. You're married. You go away. Next thing you know, right after the movie, Splitsville. You, you've been intimate with this guy. Although it's a movie, you've been on a movie set. No clothes on, all types of stuff. What you do? Why you think that happens? I seen it happen with what's her name, Angelina Jolie, when she did the movie with Brad Pitt. 
she was married with Billy Bob Thornton during that time. And right after that movie, Splitsville, he was with um, Jennifer Aniston right after that movie. Done. Does it all the time. So you don't lend yourself for that. All that today, you got so many ways, cell phone, social media, people reaching out to you that you was with for, you was with 30 years ago, 15 years ago. They wasn't no good then. What's going to be good about them now? But we put ourselves in these traps. That's why we have to incubate ourselves within Torah. If we put ourselves right in the middle of Torah, we won't find ourselves in those positions. We won't find ourselves in those positions. This is real life. I'm not yelling at you or anything like that. I'm just want us to be able to be aware of what's before us because these are the things that entrap us. You, we are not greater than the Most High God. The Most High God will put a spirit on us that we don't even know why that spirit is coming over us. You look at a, you, you look at a sister and that spirit of perversion come upon you. And you begin to want to lust after that sister. And she's married. That's that test. You know why? Because you opened up the door for it. So instead of allowing that door to be open, shut that door down so that you won't be tempted in that manner. Respect other people's wives. And sisters, respect your husband. That's real talk. So that way you won't violate. Wait till you, everything is final and then move on. You can move on, but wait till it's final. God is good. Hallelujah. Let us go. Verse 8. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Uh -huh. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. Now how sayest she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, because I said, let's not die because he of her. He said, let's not die because of her. Listen. When he went down there, Isaac told him, that's my sister. Because he didn't want to get killed for her. But Abimelech, being the king of, of Felicia and that area in Gerar, he looked out the window. He said, nah, they not brothers and sisters. Sir. Something more is happening here. He must have been doing something. And when it said that they were sport, it had to be something that only husbands and wives do, right? Only, I don't want to get explicit with it because you got children here, but it was only something, and it wasn't anything lewd, but it's something that only, he had to be touching her a certain way or something for him to say, nah, you wouldn't touch, you would not touch your sister that right? right? So he called them up, he said, nah, she's not your sister, that's your wife. And you would have caused us to sin because one of these men would have took her, right? And lay lightly lay with her because she obviously she looks good. And you would have caused us to sin. Like, come on, man, you can't do that to us. And he told him straight up. He said, look, I was afraid that y'all might have killed me for her. So that's why I said what I said. Let us go. And the people like said, what is this thou has done unto us? One of the people might easily have lain with thy wife, and thou wouldst have brought guiltiness upon us. Mm -hmm. And Abimelech charged all the people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. So the king said, Anyone who touched this man or his wife shall be put to death. He made an eater. He said, This is what it's going to be. Let's go. And Isaac sold in that land and found in the same year a hundredfold. And Jehovah blessed him. And the man waxed great and grew more and more until he became very great. That's right, because the Most High God blessed his children. So it said God blessed them in the land, and he grew up a hundredfold more. That means a hundred percent of whatever he was, he was putting his hand to, it was growing to a hundred percent. He got blessed in the land. Although there was a famine going on, Isaac got blessed. Let's go. And he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds in a great household. And the Philistines envied him. And the Philistines envied him. Doesn't that happen all the time? Right? You become great. You start to amass certain things or your business is going well. You see it within your own family. You go on your family, you, you get, get degrees or you move on and you start doing better in life. And people all of a sudden start talking about you changed, but you didn't change. They changed. 
or friends. They say, you changed. I didn't change. You changed. I'm not treating you any different. And the Philistines, when they began to see how much he was, he was gaining and how rich he was getting and how much Most High God was blessing him, they began to say, man, we, we should just take, take his stuff he in our land. Why should we let him prosper like that? And this is what was going on. The jealousy and the envy begins. This is why the Most High God tells us, it says, don't covet because coveting comes from envy and jealousy. Because you see that someone is gaining, you say, why should he have and not me? I'm going to take his or I'm going to take hers. These are all things that connect one to another. So when your brother or your sister becomes successful in something, congratulate. Mm -hmm. Don't hate. Congratulate. Like, man, got that Benz? Oh, man. <laughs> Let me, see, let, me, let me sit down right here. Let me ride around the block. Let's, let's go down town. I want to, you know what I mean? We're we going to share in this joy together. Mm -hmm. You get, once you start here, nah, you know, I, you know, I could have, you know, you could have gotten that cheap. Uh, you could have, you'd be like, man, he just hate me. Come on, man. Uh, you know what I mean? Just be happy for me. Just be, it don't have to be a bench. It could be, it could be my first car. I remember it was a brother, right? This was before all of us was driving. Um, my brother Uriah, he got, he was the first one, I think they got like, out of our group, he got a car. He got like a little prelude. I think it was made by Honda. It was a stick, a stick shift. And I remember when he first got it, so I'm like, yo, Don Rue, let's hit the city. So if you know Uriah, Uriah blind as a bat. He can't see. But he don't wear, he don't got no glasses <laughs> We somewhere in Manhattan driving around. You're right. He's shifting gears. And then next thing you know, we going up the wrong way, the wrong side of the street. I'm like, yo, you going up the wrong side. of But I was happy for him because I'm like, to me, it was like, you the first one that got a car out of this group. We, could, we, got, we got wheels that we could move around with. I'm not like, oh, why you got a car and I don't have a car. It can't be like that. It's like, you happy? I'm happy. We could be happy together. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the way it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to be hating on hating on each other, as they say. We're not supposed to be hating when someone else becomes successful. You're supposed to congratulate them. Be happy. Be happy for them. Be joyous. And understand that that's a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Let us go. Verse 15. Now all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. Uh -huh. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. Uh -huh. And Isaac departed thence and encamped in the valley of Gerard and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. Uh -huh. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found their well of living water. And the herdmen of Gerard strove with Isaac's herdmen, saying, the water is ours. And he called the name of the well is set because they contended with him. And so, they strove for that water. So you also. see right there, perfect example of what I'm speaking about, the hate. Now, wells of water are living waters. Abraham, Abraham moved from that region. What they did, they stopped up the well. Now, does that make any sense? Why would you, if the man moved away, I'm going to use those wells. There's water in there. Why would you stop them up? But that's the hate. That's what happened when hates happen. When people see you doing good, they say, I know how to help. I know how to fix them. I'm going to put sand. I'm going to put sand in that in the, in the gas tank. People do stuff like that. Oh, I'm going to scratch his car up. And they beat the car. You don't have problems with anyone. You don't have no, no issues with, with a woman. Nothing. And you come outside, you got a line from the back bumper all the way to the front bumper. You got to scrape. Why? Hey, this is exactly what they were doing. Every time the man had a well or opened something up, they stopped it up. Why? Because they were jealous and they were envious of all the blessings that the creator had given them. So what this teaches us is that in life, right, in life, 
Even though you're blessed by the Most High God, expect that there's going to be an event that happens to us all. Things are not going to go easy. People, they're going to be people that don't like you. Everybody is not going to love you. And you're going to have people that are going to be envious and jealous of what you have. So they will try to cause you harm in a, a one shape or fashion. And you have to understand that the Most High God allows this to happen. And all you have to do is continue to move forward and understand that Yah has you. And don't blow your blessing. That's all you have to understand. Let us go. And they digged another well and they strove for that also and called the name of it Sikna. Sikna. And he removed from thence and digged another well and for, for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. Right. He and finally he said, opened the well and they didn't strive for it and he called it Rehoboth. Let's go. He said, for now Yahuwah have made room for us. We shall be fruitful in the land. Which means room, right? Let's go. And he went from up from thence from Tiber Sheba. And Yehovah appeared unto, the, unto him the same night and said, Unto Isaac, let's go. I am the God of Abraham, thy father. I am the God. Now God is making this personal. I am the God of Abraham, your father. I am your God also. Let's go. Fear not. Fear not. For I am with thee. Uh -huh. And will bless thee. And multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. He built it in order there and called upon the name of Yehovah. And pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dig the well. You see, so now. What we get to see here is that he had to go through his trials and tribulations to be proven. If you don't go through trials and tribulations, how can you be proven? Life happens, brothers and sisters. You got, you have to go through trials and tribulations. If you don't go, if you in school, right? You in school and everything is going smooth. You pass in every class with fine colors, right? And then you get one professor that throws you a curveball. But that professor is driving you crazy and you can't adjust. Then that means that that little instance right there in your life, if you can't adjust to that, then that means you're going to carry on in life that way. You're not going to be able to make adjustments. You have to be able to make adjustments. Oh, this professor likes to work this way. You don't do what you want to do. You do it the way that they want it to do. They want you to do it. So therefore, I so say, I'm going to adjust. I'm not used to doing work this way. But I'm going to do it this way now. I'm going to adjust my ways in order so that I can please this professor and be able to pass this class. That's all it is. It's understanding. Life is not easy. Life is going to throw you curveballs. Didn't Jacob tell, he, he, told, he told Pharaoh, he said, he said, you know, Pharaoh asked him, like, how's been your life? And he said, he said, been a, what he said, he said, it was, it, was, it was a lot of hard days, like hard days and, and, and few of joy. Something, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like, I had a hard life. Yeah, it was rough. It wasn't easy. They weren't full of joy, but that's life. And the, and the little bit of joy that you do get, bless the name of the Most High God. And the Most High God, look, look at the prophets. Look at what the prophets did. Some prophets have to walk around naked. You think that that was, that you really want to do that, walk around naked? A prophet has to go marry a harlot and have children with her? A prophet that got smacked in the face and thrown in jail? So if we servants of God and the prophets had a rough like that and we're supposed to be like priests of the nations, you think that our job is going to be easy? The Most High God brings us the difficult um, things. The Most High brings us the difficult things. You know why? Because we built for it. He brings it to us because we're built for it. He gives us the strength. He know you. He know what you are. Look at, look at, uh, look at his servant Moshe. He built them for a truck, um, tough, as they say, like a Ford truck. So that he could withstand all those people and the bickering and the murmuring that they were going to do. That's how he builds us. But we have to be able to stand up, be strong, look ahead and understand that he is the one that made us. And understand that whatever he presents us in life, that he will look out for. The problem is that we don't look to him. You see, God wants us that when. 
You down and out? Hold on. And see if I'm if I'm real. In time of trouble, call on me and see if I'm real. But you know what we do? That's why it tells us to forsake pride and adhere to wisdom because pride don't allow us to call on God. You think you can handle it on your own and you cannot. That's why God came to Isaac and he told him. He said, I'm the God of your father, Abraham. Saying, I shall bless you. Now you went through your deal. You know what it is. And this is what I'm going to do for you. Let us go. Verse 26. Uh -huh. Then I believe Malek went to him, went to him from Gerar. And Akuzah, his friend, and Fico, the captain of his host. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore are you coming to me, seeing ye hate me? Isaac said, you, you didn't show me any love in your land. Why are you coming to me? What, you trying to attack me now? We're like, what's going to happen? I moved away from y'all. What, what, what's the problem now? Let us go. They have sent me away from you. Uh -huh. And they said, we saw plainly that Yehovah was with you. He said what? We saw plainly that Yehovah was with you. We saw that Yehovah is with you. Let's go. And we said, let there now be an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. He said, let's make an agreement because we know that God is with you. We saw how he blessed you. And we don't want God's wrath to come down upon us. So therefore, let's make an agreement. Let's go. That thou will do us no hurt, uh -huh. as we have not touched thee, and we have, and as we have done unto thee, nothing but good. We have sent thee away in peace. Well, God, now the blessed of your hope. What's the saying? Sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never hurt me. It was just words. It was just talk. So, you had, so he was like, look, we never touched you. We actually never put our hands on you. Right, right. So let's come to this agreement. So that, you know, we be in the good and we, we could forget this moment, this little moment of madness that we had. Let's go. And he made them a feast and uh -huh. they did eat and drink. They ate and they ate. They, they drank and they ate. Let's go. They rose up the times in the morning and swore one to another. And Isaac sent them away and they departed from him. They, they wanted to make sure they woke up. Be time. You, that still stands. All right. All right. Yeah. Let me get a pound on that. All right. All right. Fall back asleep. Get up. We still are. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go. Get, get, let's get a drink on that. That's what they did to make sure that that deal was sealed. You see, your word, how, how some people look at your word is really what seals a, a deal. You know that, right? Your word is really what seals a deal. Today, we got contracts and we write it on papers. Okay. That's, all right. That's legal. Legalities, but really, your word back in the days, because back then they didn't have paper. It wasn't it wasn't paper. You had to have your word, maybe a handshake and witness. Like, hey, is your word your bond? My word is my bond, and you didn't break that for anyone. And that's what was important: your word. Today, our word is important. That's why God tells us, it says, when you say something out of your mouth, it says, fulfill it. Whether it's good or bad, fulfill it because your word is what you have. And if you say something and you don't accomplish it, then guess what? Your word is going to be no good. And if your word is no good, then people can never trust you. That's why a liar is looked at and frowned upon because when you lie, right, you're, 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 you're breaking your words. You can't be trusted. So therefore, practice that from young. Even if you do something wrong, practice to be honest. When you go to your parents, don't tell them just exactly what happened. You know why? Because at the end of it, you'd rather be known as a person. Yeah, I mess up sometimes, but I don't lie to my parents. My word is always good. I always tell the truth. You want to be known as a truthful person. You don't want to be known as a liar because that follows you. You know that? Being a liar, oh, you could be a grown person. And you're like, man, that boy used to lie. That boy used to lie when he was five years old. Man, I told two lies when I was five. And this is following. I'm 40 years old. I don't lie. Baby, remember that time you told me that lie? <laughs> that was 40 years ago. 
but it follows you. That's what people, if you know known as going into your mother's purse, the people don't always remember you like that. Oh, that boy, that boy got sticky fingers. You got to watch that. But any anytime something is missing, it's, he did it. Even if they don't come out and say it, in the back of their mind, they say he did it or she did it. Your reputation precedes you. It goes before you. So therefore, from young, let your reputation be that of a person that's honest, that's fair, that's a good person. You're going to make mistakes along the way. We all make mistakes. But understand what I'm trying to tell you. Make your reputation be a good reputation. Don't let it be a bad one. So that the Most High God will bless you. And so that when people see you, they see integrity. They don't see the other part. Let us go. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well, which they had did, and said unto him, We have found water, and he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Be'er Sheba unto this day. Be'er Sheba unto this day. Let's go. And when Esau was 40 years old, he took to wife Judy, the daughter of Be'eri the Hittite, and Basmat, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And there were a bitterness of spirit unto Isaac. And she said there was a bitterness of spirit unto Isaac and unto Rebekah, because they didn't want that for their son. The Hittites got spewed out of the land and Most High God gave us the land. So I could imagine what was going on. Hey, you come home. My son come home. I almost come home. He got bigger and stacked. I'm going to be like, and boy, you put that. But in the back of my mind, I'm going to be like, do I really want my son with that? I don't care how much money she got. I don't care because you have to think about your generations. You have children with Megan the Stallion. And then what my grandchildren going to be? So when they saw Esau coming in with Megan the Stallion of that day, they said, now nah, that boy driving us crazy. You get what I'm saying? It's like mentally you, you're thinking about this and you're thinking about your posterity, what comes after you and what's going to happen to them. And the next generation, my grandchildren are going to be celebrating Xmas. They're going to be on, on, on IG and they're going to be doing all types of stuff and it's going to be whatever goes. And we think that we could do things better today than our forefathers and the advice that they gave us back and it never works out. You marry somebody that don't do Torah, you try to bring them into this world. Like sometimes you hit, but a lot of times you miss. And then what happens? Now you're struggling for children. You try to fight. You try to get, sometimes some of us catch a blessing. Right? And you get your children. That's a blessing. Right? But sometimes you struggle. And in the struggle, your children got to go through, you know, they do all the, they keep in Pesach, but they also celebrate in Christmas. Mm. You know, your children is keeping Sukkot, but they also doing Easter. And guess what? Children are children. So whatever looks like is more fun, they're going to go to that. Yeah, they like Pesach. They might not like Pesach that much, so they might not come around your house on Pesach because you can't eat this, you can't eat that. But they like Shavuot. They like Sukkot. They know it's a feast. But they like Thanksgiving. And they like Xmas because you're getting presents and you're getting presents from everybody. And that's the option that happens when you begin to marry foreign women and women that don't keep this way of life. So now you got to struggle because now you got to look at your children. You can't, you're not going to hate them because you understood what you got into, right? But it hurts because you don't want them to bow down to idols. You don't want them to worship a God that's not a God. And these are the things that happen. So that is why our father didn't want 
us or didn't want his son to marry these Hittite women, these Hermetic women, because he knew that they would lead his, his sons astray. And whatever they were doing, it made Rebecca and Isaac not comfortable. Let us go. Chapter 27, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dead, that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Here am I. He said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Uh -huh. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and make me venison, and make me savory food such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. Venison is their meat. So, like I said, from the beginning, Isaac was fond of Esau because he was a sports guy. He was a sportsman. He could go out there and hunt, find that venison that he likes so much, that game meat. Right? So he said, go out there, find me some of that game meat that I, that I love so much. And bring it and cook it up for me. Let me have it so that I could give you a blessing because his eyes dim. Right? So, eyes dimming, meaning that he's, he's blind. He can't see. His vision is gone, right? It could have been a result of anything. It could have been cataract. It could have been anything. We see it today. They have um, medical terms for it, but back then it was just blindness. <laughs> they have cataract. And, and, and what's the other thing they got on that makes you glaucoma? Or they didn't know about that stuff. It was just blindness, right? Today you go blind. If your sugar is too high, you can lose your vision um, through diabetes. We got people that lose their vision. So we don't know. I don't assume that our forefather had diabetes, but I don't know what happened. You know, so it was it was one of those type of things. So he lost his vision. So you associate losing your vision with getting old and about ready to leave up out of you. So what he did, he said, go get me that venison that I like. So that be blessed. He said this to Esau. Now, remember what happened at the beginning. Esau sold his birthright to who? Esau sold his birthright to who? To Jacob, his brother, right? So now this is when things are going to intensify. Let's go. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spoke unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me save me food that I may eat and bless thee before your before your whole, before my death. Now remember, Re Rebekah knew this from... The, while the children were in her womb, what did she know when the children were in her womb? The, the youngest, the oldest oh, will serve, serve the, the youngest, youngest, right? And that there were two types of nation where? In her womb, right? And there was a struggle. Who told her that? Yeah, right? So now things is moving. Yo, his father's about ready to give him that blessing of the firstborn. I just overheard your father telling your brother Esau, to go out there and get venison so that he could give him that blessing of the of the of the most high, of the firstborn. So now this is what it is. Let's go. Now therefore, my son, my hearken son. to my voice according to that which I command. Hearken to my voice according to that which I command you. This is his mother talking to him, right? Talking to um to Jacob at this time. Let's go. Go now to the flock. Go to the flock. And fetch me from thence two good kids of the goat. Two good kids of the goat. And I will make them save me food for thy father such as he loves. So now, if you ever taste goat and you taste wild um, game there, they taste totally different. Because their meat is tough. Because those are, those are wild animals. Right? So wild animals, the meat is always tougher. You got to tenderize it. You got to cook it longer. So that the so that the meat could get a little bit um softer, but goat is a domesticated animal. It's not the meat is not that tough. She's gonna make goat taste like this. You know she had to be a bad cook in order to make goat taste like this. Because if you tasted either one, you know they have two different tastes. And she's going to spice it up and season it up to where her husband don't even understand. And now, this is the other thing. When people lose their vision, their other senses So when you become blind, your, 
you you hear close closer, you understand more, your smell, your sense of smell goes up, your taste. So what kind of cook she was, we don't even know some of the seasonings that they was using and putting into this stuff in order for her to make goat taste like this. But she told them, go into the into the plot, get me a couple of kids of the of the goat so that I can hook it up, and you're gonna go get that recipe. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, so uh -huh. that he may bless thee before his death. Uh huh. Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a mocker. As a mocker. Thou shalt bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. And logically thinking, right? My father's not stupid. When I walk into that room, he's going to want to touch me, fill me up. I'm a smooth man. Esau has a lot of hair. You know, my father's going to curse me instead of give me a blessing. Let's go. And his mother said unto him, upon me be thy curse. She said, upon me be thy curse. But guess what? There's certain things, and some people might disagree with me saying this, but there's certain things when you become a certain age that you no longer supposed to, supposed to do when you become an adult, right? There's certain things that, yeah, when you're young, your parents... But once you move out, there's certain things that they just, like right now, my mother can't tell me going to the store and go buy her something on the shop out there. I'm sorry, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm sorry. You know, that's, love you, but I can't do it. You know what I mean? Like there's certain things that you cannot do that you, you, you just won't do because you have to answer to God. She's not going to answer to God. You're going to answer to God. No, because there's a point where you, you have to make that decision. When you're living in their house, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. You're living in their house, you don't have a choice. Or as you're going to be out, you ask God to forgive you. But once you living on your own and certain, I can't, I can't, I got to wait till sundown, Emo. I'll get it when the sun goes down. I'll get it when the sun goes down. Now. I'm ordering you, I'm, you'll get it when the sun goes down. And it's going to have to be that way. Because you have to answer to God. They don't have to answer to God for that. It's like that prophet. Remember what? It was the story about the prophet. When God told the prophet, go this way and come back this way. Right? And then he sent the false prophet. And the prophet said, no, God spoke to me, told me to go that way. And so when he went the other way, the lion jumped out, ate him up. God told you, go this way, come back this way. Somebody else can't come back and tell you to do to do different. So we have to answer to the creator. Let us go. Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only hark into my voice and go fetch them. Fetch me then. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. Mm -hmm. And his mother made savory food such as his father loved. His father loved. And Rebecca took the choicest garments of Esau, her eldest son, which were with her in the house. And smell like Esau, Jacob, the choicest garments. Son. It probably smelled like the field. It was, it was Esau's smell. Right? Like we all have our particular smell. Whatever it is, like whatever you use, you might use down. You might use swabby tail. You got your every house got their own smell. Sometimes you can smell somebody go past, oh, that's so and so. Or whatever cologne you use, whatever perfume you use. So Esau had his particular smell, and it was in his clothes. And his mother understood that that. Isaac's sense of smelling would have been heightened, right? And she has to mask Jacob's smell with Esau's smell. Let's go. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands. Put the kids the of the goats. So now, when you when you see goats here, right? Goats here is not stringy; it's woolly, like how how bear how bear is like this woolly, curly. That's how goats hair it. So she put it on his arms, right? Because Esau was a was a hairy man. Let's go. And upon the smooth of his neck, on the smooth of his neck, she let's gave go. the same food and the bread uh -huh. which he had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. Uh huh. And he came in unto his father and said, "My father, my he father, said, here am I. Who art thou, my son?" And Jacob said unto him, to answer his father, "I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Mm -hmm. Arise, I pray thee." Sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me. So what did he do to his father? He lied. 
because he wasn't Esau. He was Jacob. Now you got different schools of opinion saying that Jacob sold his birthright. So basically he was such and such. He was, he was Esau for that instance. I'm looking at it. I'm not reading between the lines. I'm looking at the history for what is written, right? That's what it is. He, he, lied to, he lied to his father at this point because even he understood that, man, if my father finds out that I'm lying to him, he's going to curse me. And the mother said, let, your, let whatever punishment be on me. But he was already of age enough to be able to refute that because God already let her know from the beginning that the oldest shall serve the youngest. That was the blessing there already. That was from Yah. The blessing was already established. So these are just formalities. These are just formalities. Esau is the firstborn. But the blessing that came from God, she already knew it from the beginning. But she, you know, our mother in her own mind thought that she had to push the boy this way. And it didn't necessarily have to go that way. So I know some people are going to disagree with me because we've been hearing this story for so many years, the same way our forefathers don't make mistakes, they're perfect, they're ordained. No, the book is there to show us their mistakes and to show us their faults and the things that they did. And it also says that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. That means that a righteous man makes mistakes. He's not perfect. Righteous men are not perfect. Let us go. And Isaac said unto his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? So Isaac, no understanding that when you go hunting, it takes you a while. When you hunt a deer, it's not just the deer is going to be there, you shoot it, and the deer is going to fall, you go, you skin it. That Back then they had bow and arrow. Today, they got rifles, you hit the deer in the head. If you get a head shot, it's going to drop. But if you hit it in the body, that deer going to run, run. You got to track it down. You got maybe a tracking dog or something. Because you're not, even while the deer the, is wounded, you cannot catch that deer right away. So back then, it was bow and arrow. You hit the deer. Hopefully, you hit it in a, in a neck vein or something like that. They bleed out quicker. But if you hit it in the body, now you got to run after the deer. All the other predators that are around, you got to ward them off. You got to run after the deer. When that deer eventually bleeds out, and you catch it, then you got to cut the throat. You got to skin it. You got to go through all that. So it was a process. It wasn't a thing like this. So Isaac, understanding this, saying, how you came back so far, so fast with this? Like, what happened? And within a couple of hours, you back. And let's see what he said. And he said, because your whole thy God sent me good speed. Oh, man, you can't, you, can't, you can't do it better than that because your whole thy God sent me good speed. Let's go. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob. Ah, uh, didn't I tell you? The, the air is heightened. The voice is the voice of Jacob. But so the, the man is no fool. But the what? But the hands are the hands of Esau. But the hands, yeah, he felt them up. Come over here. Come close to me. Let me fill you up. I hear Jacob, but... The body is Esau's. Let's mm. go. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. So he blessed him. And let's hear it. And he said, art thou my very son Esau? He, he asked said, him again, are you my son Esau? That's the second time to confirm it. Are you Esau? What he said. And he said, I am. I am. He let's said, go. Bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. That my soul may bless you. Let's go. And he brought it near to him and he did eat. He bought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. Come near now and kiss me, my and son. Him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which Jehovah hath blessed. Uh -huh. So Yah I give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fat places of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Mm -hmm. Curse be everyone that curseth thee and bless be everyone that blesseth thee. Uh -huh. Curse be everyone that curses us and bless be everyone that curses us. Oh, that blesses us. So anyone that wants to bless us will be blessed. But anyone that tries to curse us and do things to us, 
It's like they did in our communities and in our in our neighborhoods where we're at, where they put drugs to destroy us. Now that is turned around and is biting them in the behind. Because anyone who sought to do us any harm, the most high God reversed it right back on them. We are the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, the same man that we're talking about right now. Let us go. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce going out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. Esau finally came in from the hunting. Let's go. He also made savory food. Uh-huh. He brought it unto his father, and he said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? Who art thou? Who, who are you? Let's go. And he said, I'm thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. I'm your firstborn, Esau. I tremble. He trembled exceedingly. exceedingly. Uh-huh. Who then is he that have taken venison and brought it me, and I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him? Yea, and he shall be blessed. And he shall be blessed. Because I said it out of my mouth. So your parents' blessings uh -huh. are very important. Talk about it. When your parents bless you or curse you, you don't want them to curse you. That's right. And sometimes the curse don't come like specific, may you be cursed for the rest of it. And curses don't mean four letter words in the in the Bible. Right. Because there wasn't no there wasn't no MS, there wasn't no S H I T, there wasn't any of that. The Hebrew language is a holy language, you're not gonna find a vulgarity in it. Cursing is may your days, may the days of your life. Continue to be hardship. Mm. May may you um may you go through it's like what happened to Cain at the beginning. May you be a vagabond and a wanderer. That's a curse. So when you get your parents so angry to where they say you ain't no good mm. and you never gonna be any good, that's a curse. Mm. You never want to get them to get to that. Where you continuously keep doing stuff, you keep doing stuff, and they, they get to the point where they say, you, you are no good, and you are never going to be good. Right. And they anger, they curse you, and that sticks with you for the rest of your life. You want them to reverse that. Please reverse that curse. Please, because I don't need that in my life. That's why he said, and he shall be blessed, because I said it out of my mouth. Let us go. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceeding great and bitter cry and said unto his father, he cried, oh, me no, also, no, oh, my father. Bless me also. You don't got, you don't have one left for me. Let's go. He said, thy brother came with God. Your brother came with God. And have taken away thy blessing. And took away your blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Is he Jacob? not called a supplanter? He supplanted him. But he has supplanted me these two times. Right. And he took away my birthright. He took away my, no, you sold your birthright. Uh-huh. But behold, uh -huh. now he has taken away my blessing. Now he took away my blessing. Let's go. And he said, hast thou not reserved the blessing for me? So then you research, then you put one in the, in the, like the extra one that you was going to give him. Right. Let's go. Isaac answered and said unto Esau, behold, I have made him thy lord. I and made him Lord rule over I, you. And all his brethren have I given to him for service. Everybody going to be serving to him. Let's go. And with corn and wine have I sustained. And with corn and wine have I sustained with food. Let's go. So what then shall I do for thee, my now, son? Now where it says corn there, um, understand that in those days, corn was not in, was, is not indigenous to that region of the world, which is Medi in the Mediterranean area. And that, in that time, they have, obviously they have corn over there. But what we know is corn or maize is indigenous in that period of time in the Americas, right? So when it's speaking about corn there, when they translated the book from Hebrew to English, it was a form of grain, right? So they have barley, they have wheat. These are the, the grains that they had. So when you see corn there, don't think of like the, the husk of corn and the corn on the cob. Like, don't, don't think about that stuff. We're talking about grain. We're talking about barley. We're talking about wheat. That's what we're speaking about. Let's go. And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Uh -huh. Bless me, even me also, O my father. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, of the fat places of the earth shall be thy dwelling, and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, 
thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt break loose, that thou shalt shake his yoke from off thy neck. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with his father blessed him. Esau said in his heart, let the days of mourning for my father be at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. You heard what he said? He said he hated his brother in his heart because of what he had done to him. He said in his heart that when my father dies, he said, I'm going to kill him mm. for what he did to him. He, he moved him to anger to where he could say he could kill his own twin brother. Now, they said that twin brothers have this kind of, of connection with each other. You know, you see many stories where you talk about twin brothers when one or, or, or siblings that are twins, when one died, the other one could feel it. Mm. And they and they usually like this, twins, because they shared the, 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 the womb together at the same time. They grew up together. Parents, most of the time, have them dressed together. They go through the same struggles and the same things together. If they're identical, they do the switcheroo on you. You know, if they're in the same school, one could go into the classroom or the other. I'm not doing that good in math. Can you go in there for me? Yeah, take that. <laughs> Teacher will never know. <laughs> Teacher will never know. Hey, go in there, take that test. But um, he so for him to be moved to say of his own twin that when my father died, I'm going to kill him. You know that that hatred grew to be intense. Let us go. In the words of Esau, her elder son were told to Rebecca. And she said and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau has touching thee, doth come for himself, proposing to kill thee. Now, therefore, my son, hearken to my voice, and arise, flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tire with him a few days, until thy brother's fury turn away, until uh -huh. thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be bereaved of you both in one day? And he was angry, and it said, Anger rest of where? And a bosom of a fool. So when you're angry, you do foolish things. That's why you see all these, all these murders and all these killings out here. Pull up, son. Now you're playing on somebody's ego. I'm pulling up. So now you left me no choice. There's no choice left now because can't talk it. You put it all on Instagram that you on somebody's block. Right. So now there's no going back. You got to actually, you know, do something crazy. And you end up taking somebody's life. And then you end up serving 25 to life sentence. And you gone. It's two of you gone. Two parents bereaved. One, they will never see their child again. The other is going to see their child behind bars for the rest of their lives. Mm. Anger. Arrest in the bosom of a fool. And it causes you to do foolish things. So forsake anger and wrath so that your days may be long. Let us go. Becca said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Ted. If Yaakov take a wife of the daughters of Ket, such as these of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life be? What good shall my life be to get a Megan the Stallion? My son get one of them and walk around here. And what good shall my life be? What's going to be of my posterity? What's going to be of my grandchildren? Don't be blinded by that stuff. That stuff is just smoke, smoke and mirrors. All those bodies are fake. All that stuff is fake. Find you a real wife. Find you a real husband. Or you end up with a Tory Lane so you get shot in your foot. You don't want nobody to shoot you in your foot either. Hmm. It sounds harsh, but you got fools out here. Let us go. Chapter 28. Let's finish it. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a congregation of people, and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, and says, I see with thee that thou mayest inherit the land of thy sister. Go get you somebody from back home. Go back home, get somebody from back home. Don't get you no, no one. Why you think the, 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 the East Indians and all of them, they already, they set marriages from when you little, and that's who you're going to marry. 
That Arabs, they set marriages up when you little, and that's who you're going to marry. You're going to learn to love her. You're going to learn to love him. That's how it goes, because why do people do that? Arrange marriages? It's so that you do not end up going through headache and heartache when you get, when, when things go bad. Or you go through a little rocky patch. Let us go. That thou mayest inherit the land of thy sojourners, which God gave unto Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram, unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. And now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and sent him away to Padan Aram to take him a wife from thence. And that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Kenah. That Jacob hearkened to his father and his mother, and he was gone to Padan Aram. Esau saw the daughters of Kenan please not Isaac, his father. He find, you see, that he saw that the Hittite woman didn't please his father. And now what he did. So Esau went to Ishmael and took unto the wives that he had, Mahalat, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nabayot, to be his wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he went to what? His uncle, right? He went to his uncle. He got, and back then they married cousins. He married one of his cousins. And said, well, he's not, my father's not pleased with these women over here. So I'm going to go to somewhere closer to my lineage. And I'm going to get a daughter of the Ishmaelites, which is what we know today as um, what we would say Arabs and um, people from the, from the East, like the, um, that mostly practice Islam today, like Muslims and people of that sort. And you can't say all Muslims. It's a specific people. Is the, the, the people from the Middle East region, that he, the family of Ishmael. So thank you to Most High God for this day. I'm grateful to the creator of heaven and earth for my life. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's a blessing to be um, back here with God's people. It's supposed to be Prince Jeriel's day today, but he asked someone um, to um, do the lesson for him. So hopefully I did a, a good enough job and didn't um, lead anyone astray. Hallelujah.
CN of the BCE, not the CDC. They wanna mute me. Police agents in this matrix tryna shoot me. Gods of the wood and stone wanna recruit me. We, we Detroit's the lights in our keepers. Keeping Yom Kippur, keeping kind to the poor, keeping Torah and more. Blessings they come galore. El Shaddai, that's my Yah, the Almighty, that's my Lord. Devarim 28, you would die by the sword. Cursed in idolatry, that ride to the morgue. Your cause is out in vain. Movements are the riots. Can't breathe serving Jesus. Can't breathe from a virus. This Babylon, they got people in our land. They still serve by all just to keep us to their plans. They been foul. They trying to take us out like the six foul. They got forgave sins, still they live foul. Truth be told, sins ain't forgiven. Contradicts our nature, if we're born and we're sinning. No balance to the crooked that gets sworn in positions. Curses of my forefathers born in affliction. That's why I'm giving scripture over wax. Spiritual drugs don't need a swisher nor a rap. Spiritual plug, I dropped the fiction from the facts. Had to create another bar just to make this all rap. My life in idolatry, I can't take it all back. Glad y'all didn't kill me for all the bacon I consume. Ignorance and getting drunk, drugs and gangs, lugging tools. Sex out of marriage, the hatred being true. Calling knock these niggas, but now they call me cool. But now they see the fringes when I step inside a room. Kaboom, I move and groove and move positions. Clicking, you snooze and lose and serve the wicked. Tripping, uh, I see it all through my iris. Salah, salah, salah. I see it all through my iris. Salah, salah, salah. I see it all through my iris. Salah, salah.
by the rivers of Babylon. Yeah, we sat down and we cried when we remembered Jerusalem. We were sick, Lord, near to dying. Oh, Hallelujah. Blessed be Yahweh, our King, who has allowed us to return once again. Hoping and praying those that have not arrived at the Most High will cause get here safely. Those that can't make it out today, the Most High be with them wherever they're at, observing this day. This time we will begin. Tell her to turn that music off. We'll start off by singing the song Zed Ha Shabbat, a, a song for the start of the Shabbat day. Hallelujah. Zed Ha Shabbat, Same Akani. Zed Ha Shabbat, Same Akani. Zed Ha Shabbat, Same Akani. Ani yo he va yo shalashe. Zed Ha yo mato, Same Akani. Zerayo mato, same akani. Zerayo mato, same akani. Ani yo he va yo shalashe. Ki Hashem ushola, ko yo mi ki Hashem unata, ko devari malelo, alelo, alelo. Ya she she orkada, same akani. Ashe sheer kadash, same akani. Ashe sheer kadash, same akani. Adio eva yo slashe. Same akani. Ani yo same akani, ani yo heva yo slashe. Zerayo mato, same akani. Zerayo mato, same akani. Ani yo heva yo Ko de bari malelo, alelo, alelo, ya se se arkada, same akani, a se se arkada, same akani, a se se arkada, same akani, ani yo eva yo chlashe, ani yo eva yo chlashe. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the mighty Yah. Praise the mighty Yah. Give honor, thanks, and praise to you, O great wondrous King. 
Thanking you for the blessing of this day, the Shabbat day, O great wonders king. Thank you for last night's sleep, O great wonders king. Thank you for the blessing of this week, O great wonders king, O most high. Thanking you for the food, shelter, clothing, jobs, family, children, imams, abbas, O great wonders king. Thanking you, O great wonders king, for this day, O great wonders king, the Shabbat day. That you have made this a sign for you and the children of Israel throughout all their generations, O oh great one is king. O oh most high, we thank you for this opportunity to know who you are, O oh great one is king. Because there's many out there do not know who you are, O oh great one is king. For our brothers and sisters, O oh great one is king, that might be in the churches and calling on the other deities, O oh great one is king, there's no gods, O oh great one is king, bless them. Put their mind's eye into this understanding also. Everyone don't come at the same time. Only you know, O oh great one is king, who you call, O oh great one is king. Thanking you, O oh most high, for this opportunity, O oh great one is king, for DCB and all the Knesses and camps, O oh great one is king, to call on you, O oh great one is king. We ask you, O oh great one is king, to please accept our service, O oh great one is king, O oh most high. And for all those that put work in, and all the Knesses, O oh great one is king, the brothers and the sisters, O oh great one is king. Please continue to bless our elders, O oh great one is king, O oh most high, and especially our Ima Yadiah, O oh great one is king, thanking you that she's healing, O oh great one is king, that she can walk up the steps, O oh great one is king, O oh most high. Please to continue to bless her and her daughter also who take care of her, O oh great one is king. And Simkaya and her family, Imam and uh, aunt, O oh great one is king, healed them. For all those, O oh great one is king, that I might not know by name, O oh great one is king, uh, most high. Bless the families of all of those who have ones that may be sick, mentally, physically, O oh great one is king. O oh most high, please continue to. To keep us up, O oh great one is king. Please continue to shield us, guide us, and protect us, O oh most high, O oh great one is king. Because you are the doctor that heals, O oh great one is king. Please continue to bless those in the hospitals, those who suffer in silence, O oh great one is king, O oh most high. O oh most high, we understand the prophecy, what's going over in the east, O oh great one is king. I am not going to say much, but we have to take those signs, O oh great one is king. And bless us to prepare to get ourselves together, O oh great one is king. Because it's not long, O oh great one is king. It's not long. And we thank you, O oh great one is king. We know things have to happen. We know, you know, it's not a good thing. We know it's going to be a hard time for Yaakov also, the children of Israel. As long as you've been putting out the prophecy that the people who are ruling are coming down, O oh great one is king. O oh, Most High, we have to prepare ourselves because it won't be long that we're on our way home. O oh, Great One is King, O oh, Most High. We just have to stick to it, O oh, Great One is King. We have to be strong. The strength is believing in you. The strength is doing your commandments, O oh, Great One is King. And the strength, as you have made your, con your commandments for us to be a family and to love each other and forgive each other and to have that mercy and that compassion, O oh, great one is king. We have to build, O oh, great one is king. With your blessing, bless us to bring back the love that we need among each other, O oh, great one is king, O oh, most high. O oh, great king, O oh, most high, please continue to bless us individually and collectively, we pray, O oh, most high. As I say, O oh, great one is king, if I'm not clean enough, or if I'm not worthy enough, bless us for your children. O oh, great king, Israel, O oh, most high, please hear our cry, O oh, great one is king. We need help, O oh, great one is king. We need help for you to rise us up. We need help. We know it's the time for the signs for us to be that we are your chosen people, O oh, great one is king, and you are our God, the creator of all things and everything. For without you, there's no us, O oh, great one is king. And for those who are still suffering it, because it's a hard thing when you lose loved ones, oh, great one is king. For all of us that lost loved ones, oh, great one is king, please continue to comfort us, oh, great one is king. Please continue to bless us to help each other, oh, great one is king. For without you, there's no us, 
O great and wondrous King. Giving all honor, thanks, and praise to you, O Most High, because we are trying to mend the breach, O great one, this King. We are trying to go through the Abraham, the Isaac, and the Jacob, O great one, this King, Israel, the covenant that you made with our forefathers, O great one, this King, and bless those that who was before us, O Most High. Giving all honor, thanks, and praise to you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the mighty Yah. Yeah, 
Yakai, Yakai, my Yah lives in me. In the evening, before I lay down, I get on my knees and pray to you, oh Yah. I'll sing praises all my days without you. Our nation can't live. Remember Israel, Yah lives in you. He lives in me too. So what are we gonna do? Everybody sing it. Yah, Kai. Yakai, my Yah lives in me. Yakai, Yakai, my Yah lives in me. Nugget. Hallelujah. Giving glory to this great and magnificent King, Jehoshaphat. We thank the great King for life, food, clothing, and shelter. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding at this time. We will continue with the prayers that are set aside for the beginning of the um, Shabbat day service. The first being the 92nd Psalm, a song for the start of the Shabbat day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Slika. It is a good thing to give thanks unto Yahuwah and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon the instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with the solemn sound. For thy Yahuwah has made me glad through thy work. I'll triumph in the works of thy hands. How great is thy works, O Yahuwah, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not need of a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up as grass, when all workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they should be destroyed forever. But thy Yahuwah most high forevermore. For all thy enemies, so Yahuwah, for all thy enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. When my horn should I exalt like the horn of the wild ox, I am anointed to refresh soil. My eye also have seen the desire of my enemies, and my ears have heard the desire of the wicked that rise. Forget this. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of your horse shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that your is upright. He's my rock, and there is no righteousness in him. Hallelujah. The 125th Psalm, page 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They that trust in your host shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abide us forever. As the Mount is surrounded by Jerusalem, so is your whole round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good all your whole unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As the such turn aside unto the crooked ways, your whole shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Hallelujah. Going to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, beginning from verse 4. Shema Yisrael, Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad. Hear, O Yisrael, Yehovah our God, Yehovah is one. And I shall love Yehovah thy God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. And these words shall command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. And I shall teach them diligently unto thy children. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thy eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house, and upon thy gates. And it shall be when Jehovah thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Yishak, and to Yaakov, to give thee great and goodly cities to thy builders now. And houses full of all good things, thou fillest not. Wells dig, thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees, thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten them before, then beware lest thou forget Jehovah, who brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear Jehovah thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. 
You shall not go after all the gods of the gods of the people that are round about you. For your whole thy God is a jealous God amongst you. Lest the anger of your whole thy God be kindled against thee. And he sure thee from the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Therefore, we honor and extol the God of our fathers for restoring us back to our heritage, even here in the land of our captivity. We thank thee and praise thee with all our might. And we say, blessed is the name of your whole our God forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us sing the Shema. Shema, 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 Yisrael. Yahovah Eloheinu. Shema, Yisrael. Yahovah Eka Baru. Let us all sing. Raise your, vo your voices before the Creator. Tole Ola. Sing it one more time. Shema, 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 Yisrael. Raise your voices. Oh, I love you. Praise the mighty King. Ah, Yisrael. Ah, oh, I love you. Continue on page 13. And Yehoah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Esau, saying, Verily you shall keep my sharp toe, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am Yehoah who sanctify you. He shall keep the Shabbat, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that profaneth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever do of any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day is the Shabbat of solemn rest, holy to Yehovah. Whosoever doeth any work in the Shabbat day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Yisrael shall keep the Shabbat, to observe the Shabbat throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And it's a sign between me and the children of Yisrael forever, that heaven and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Yah finished his work which he had made, and Yah blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because that any rested from all his work, which God in creating had made. Hallelujah. If you would please repeat after me. Hallelujah. If thou turn away thy foot because of the Shabbat. From pursuing thy business on my holy day. And call the Shabbat a delight. And the holy of your whole are honorable. And shall honor it. Not doing thy wanted ways. No pursuing thy business, no speaking thereof. Then should I delight thyself in Yehovah, and I make thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and I feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy father, for the mouth of Yehovah has spoken it. Hallelujah. We love for thee, O Yehovah our God. We have entered our great house to welcome the Shabbat day, which invites us to enjoy the blessings of rest and peace. Thou art near to us in this place, and wherever we call upon thee, thou will come to us and bless us. On this Shabbat day, may we look back upon this past week and reflect earnestly upon the way we have used the fleeting moments. Be with us in the coming week that we may be faithful to all our duties. Make us glad that there is so much joy in this house. May we ever be eager to spread around the light of happiness, of love, and goodwill. May this day bring peace to our hearts and joy to our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us sing the Shema. Shema, 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 Shema. Yisrael. Yahuwah Eloheinu. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Eka, yeah, Baruch, Shem Kebo, Makuto Leola, Leola, Leola. Hey, 
Shema Yisrael Yahovah Eloheinu Shema Yisrael Yahovah Eka Baru Lord, your whole our God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness, the truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and that by no means cleanse the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. Therefore, we serve only you, Yahweh, because your glory endures forever. We will love you and serve you, and show reverence unto thy most holy name. Who's like unto the king of glory? Hey. Who's like unto our God who fights the battles of his people, Israel? Hey. He who smites nations for us and subdues our enemies before our eyes. Therefore, we honor and praise his holy name. Shout for joy, all you holy ones, to the most high. For our king will deliver us, so we keep his laws and commandments. For our king will save us, so we serve him with all our souls. For our king will deliver us, so we do all that he commanded, most shade. For our king will save us, and we praise him with all our might. For our king is the God of glory. Yahweh, Yahweh, serve out is his name. So make a joyful noise, O chief man, and sing a lie, ye princes of Israel. Let the daughters of Zion sing with joy. Let all the hosts of Israel clap their hands. For the king of glory is near, from everlasting, even unto everlasting. Thou art God. Hallelujah. Tikweo kasotra bezio tareo behar kwado takaredo amhar is ki bayon seo yahua ki bayon seo yahua tikweo kasotra bezio tareo behar kwado takaredo Trumpet in Zion, down in the long end of the holy mountain, that all the people of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh is coming, for the day of Yahweh is at hand. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, down in the long end of the holy mountain, that all the people of the land tremble for the day of Yahweh. Sound an alarm in the holy mountain And all the people of the land Tremble for the day of Yahweh is coming For the day of Yahweh is at hand Knock it! Praise Yahweh! Praise Yahweh! Glory to his high holy name. Yahoo. I said Yahoo. I said Yahoo. He said, call upon his day, name day and night, Yahoo. to him, Yahoo, we uplift this name into eternity, Yahoo, give glory unto his high holy name, Yahoo, he woke us all up this morning and gave us something to eat, Yahoo, Yahoo, Praise his holy name. Yahoo, 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 I said Yahoo. Again, again. 
Hey. Quadosha, 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 Yahuva, Quadosha, 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 Yahuva, Yahuva, Pray somebody king. Say ya Eli. Say hallelujah. 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 Yahoo. Hallelujah. 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 Yahoo. Somebody king. Yeah. Hey, rock on ya. 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 Yahoo. Somebody king. Yah, Eli. Let's give thanks to Yah. Told I Yah. Told I Yah. Told I Yah. Yah. Told I Yah. Told I Yah. Told I Yah. Yahuwa. Yah, Eli. Somebody king. Yah Eli. Hey. Quadosha. Hallelujah. Rakunya. Todaya. Hallelujah. Rakunya. Yahua. Yah Eli. Somebody king. Yah Eli. Yeah. Baruka she. Tell Yahuwa. Baruka she. Tell Yahuwa. Baruka she. Tell Yahuwa. Baruka Shem, Baruka Shem, Shem Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of our God. Blessed be the name of our God. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of our God. Hey, who no taint like him? Oh my him come. Who no taint like him? Oh my him come. No taint like No tain like him, no tain like him, oh my am God. He gives us bread and our waters too. I said he gives us bread and our waters too. He gives us bread and our waters. He gives us bread, I said he gives us bread, and I water us too. Hey, there is no God, 
like Jehovah our King. I said there is no God like Yahweh King. There is no God, no, 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 like Jehovah our King. There is no, I said there is no God like Yahweh King. Hey. When I wake up in the morning, I've got to praise his name. When I wake up in the morning, I teach my kids to do the same. The whole world is great. He's so, so great. I've got to praise his name and I just can't wait. Yahweh is king. Yahweh is king of heaven and earth. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Tell Yahweh. Say Baruch Hashem. Tell Yahweh. Baruch Hashem. Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Tell Yahweh. Hallelujah. Y'all about a half a second too late, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the mighty king, thanking the most high king for life, food, clothing, and shelter. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you the most high God for being who he is. The king of the universe. The Olam Wa'ed. Forever and ever we give glory to this most high king for allowing us to be here. Thanking the creator for being with us. For um, waking us up and for being who he is. The mighty king of the universe. Yehoah out. There is no other God but Yehoah. He stands alone. You may be seated. Thanking the creator, and um, I'm going to be brief. I do want to say that um, the most high God is good, and he's great. He's merciful. He allows us to, um, to think, to breathe, to see. So many of us are, 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 are able to do so many things. Thank you the most high God for the life of Ima Yadaya, who they turned the, uh, I believe, like a four or five day trip into a two and a half month adventure in New York City. But the most high God has his purpose. And we see um, through everything, sometimes God tests us out. Because things happen and then you have to change your plans. You have to we said we a congregation. We said we are united, that we love people, and that we look out for our own. Then the Most High God puts you to the test to see whether or not those things come to pass and whether or not you're going to do the things that you say out your mouth. So I, I'm thankful to the creator that, Ema, you're healing and that I heard you walked up the steps this morning. So that's a blessing. That means that that's here. And... These are families that we met online, and they think so much of us from online. So when you come in the midst of us, you have to be the song that you sing and the message that you bring. You have to be all those things. But regardless of what's going on in your personal lives, you have to be all that, the song that you sing and the, and, and, and the message that you profess to be. Because that's part of being Israel. It says when you give your word, it says, you know, don't go back on your word. 
Because your word is your bond. So those are things that we keep in mind and we get understanding of and, and we see. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you see. I look forward to the little kids when they come up. My daughter come dance. The, the little um, boys come up and start drumming and stuff like that. That's a beautiful spirit. Th those are things that you don't want to break away from them. Those are things that I'm glad that in this generation, because I heard in the older generation, they wouldn't play that. Get off them drums, boy, and go back, sit back over there. You know, but in this generation, you see the children coming up with the spirit of praise. And never break that away from them. Enhance it. They're going to make noise all day. I got one that every chance he get, he bang everything in the house. The teachers say he banged the desk at the school. Everything that they do is drumming and playing. And it could be 6 o'clock in the morning. There's no time limit to them. If it's 6 o'clock in the morning, that's when they're going to drum. You know, sometimes you got to put a little control on that because you don't want to wake everybody up in the building. But that spirit of praise, don't break that away from them. I love to see that in children because you don't know you might be raising up the next prophet. You might be raising up the next great musician and, and, and next great person that praises the creator. And then you break that away from them. And what they turned out to be when... They plan from God was for them to be that. You broke it away. Now what they going to become? So those are things that we got to keep in mind. And, you know, when they, when they little like that as a parent, you, you appreciate them. You know, um, even me being older, having, I'm not that old, but I'm saying, but I already went through this already. This is the second rodeo, you know. So you learn to have more patience. You learn to, you know, to see things a little bit differently. You don't, you don't be as, as crazy as you was when you was younger. But, um, but that's experience and that's time. You know, and that's time and experience. But even with that time and experience, when we have our parents and you get older, when, when you are that age and as you grow and your parents nurture you and, and help you in the way that you should go. And our parents are not perfect by far. You know, as you get older, you begin to see the faults and you begin to see the, the shortcomings or whatever. But we are not, children cannot judge their parents. Not even in Torah. God don't allow you to do that. You can't, you can't judge your mother, you can't judge your father, regardless of what they've been into. You can't judge them. If you don't believe me, look at the precept where it talks about those who go astray or go a whoring after other gods. It says, whether it be a near kinsman, a brother, a sister, it never mentions your parents. Because you can't judge your parents. Somebody else could judge them, but you can't. So, when it comes to parents, parents is a, is a very delicate thing. You know, I, I came to my, I, I, I was out last week. No one was in the house. My mother has keys to my house, so she was in there you know, eating food and doing everything. She called. She was like, you know, I need something to eat. Can I say, Ma, you don't got to ask me if you want to eat some food. You just go into the refrigerator and you eat, you know. But I have a good relationship with my mother where sometimes you joke so much that you have to understand, like, when your parents is serious. So <laughs> she wanted, she, how it started was, I'm going to come, I'm going to come borrow the car so I can go pick something up, and then I'm going to go home from there. So I'm like, cool. So when she got there, I'm like, here go the key, you go, it's getting kind of late or whatever, but I seen that look on her, on her face like, oh, I'm feeling tired. <laughs> so I already know what that means. <laughs> so I'm like, my, 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 my. You said, <laughs> you coming to borrow the key <laughs> to go do whatever you was going to do. She was like, yeah, but I, she started running it down. I said, Ma, nah, you don't worry about it. I got you. You know, Whenever you're ready, let's go. Because at that point, it wasn't a joke anymore. It was like, I'm tired. And this is the mother who's nurtured me, who when um, a roach got in my ear, took me to the emergency room. This is the same mother when I had pneumonia, temperature, going through the sky. She, through the winter, went to the hospital, took care of me. This was the same mother when I fell, and I, that's why I got that, 
this um, little scar on my forehead, I fell straight off a fence. This big head of mine, I had it when I was little. Bam! Crack, I might, might have cracked the concrete. And my mother rushed me to the emergency room. That same mother, I can't disrespect her. Regardless of what or where I have to be able and willing, as long as I have breath in my soul and in my body, that I have to respect her regardless of whatever. Our parents as children, they are our most Besides our children, our most precious commodities because they gave you something that you could never get back to them in return. They gave you life. So to stand up and to disrespect a mother, a father, or anyone that's, that gave birth to you, you have to really look at yourself, even as an Israelite, because not even a Negro in the street does that. Not even a Negro in the street does that. A person that's the foulest person. They come around mom. Mom don't know none of the foul stuff. That mom, they lying. They not talking. They not telling the truth. You okay, mommy? You want me to, won't curse around their mother? Won't do anything like that in front of their parent? That's why parents come in and say, not my child. Because the reverence and the honor and the respect that they have for them in front of their parent, they not going to, outside, they a whole different thing. So how is it is as Israelites, knowing truth and understanding and knowing this way of life, I don't care if you just find out about this way of life two years ago. If you was disrespectful before you came into this way of life and now you know about this, you're supposed to straighten out. When your mother talked to you, when your father talked to you, you're supposed to straighten out because like I said, you cannot give to them what they gave you, which is life. And God gave them the right to take life away from you. Yeah. It said if you have a son that's a drunkard and a glutton and is disrespectful, say you bring him up to the judges. And guess who word the judges take? They don't take your word. They take your parents' word. Yeah. You got people haul off, smack their parents, call the police on their parents, do all types of atrocious things to their parents. And that's the man and the woman that brought you on this earth. Now think about that. Think about the disrespect. But I tell you this, if you ever done it, you better go back and apologize after you hear this. Better go down and bow your head and, and, and bend them knees and ask moms, can you please forgive me? Ah, but can you please forgive me? You got dudes that haul off and punch their father in the face. Start tussling with their father. Start boxing with because now I got strength so I feel like I could take on you. Nothing gives you the right to ever do that. Humble yourself. Bow your neck. Walk away. Even if you know mommy is wrong. Even if you know dad is wrong. So you got it, pops. You got it, moms. And just walk away. Because that's what Torah teaches us. Torah teaches us to be righteous individuals. Not to be scoundrels. Amen. You, can't, you can't be a man of the house if you ain't doing nothing to say that you are the man of the house. So if you if you the oldest child and you a boy... Right? Or you a girl and you living in your mother's house. That's your mother's house. That's not your house. That's your father's house. That's not your house. And if she tells you she needs help, guess what you got to do? And if you don't want to help no more, then what's the next step? There you go. You on your own. By myself. You by yourself. But it should never be a situ situation. I see this man, he leave work every day. He forgot how old Prince Jeriel is. But he go down to his mother's house every day. <laughs> he go to his mother's house every day. Everything is okay, ma? You need anything? 
You need me to do anything? That's a good son. That's a good daughter. You need me, need me to run to the store? Yeah, you still make sure. Because if you're 60 and your mother's 85, guess what? You still her child. You still got to make store runs. <laughs> yeah. Still got to make store runs. I, know, I have friends that used to live on the seventh floor in the project. No elevator. And mama, you run, you run upstairs. Oh, I got everything. Oh, I forgot something. Guess what you got to do? Go back down. Run up and down them flights of steps. Come back up. And then she might say, I forgot one last thing. Guess what you got to do? Go back down. That's part of being youth. That's part of being a child. That's the joy of being a child. You might not think so, but wait till you get older and your children start disrespecting you. Because you know the Most High God has a weird sense of humor. The things that you do, the Most High God brings them back on you. Sevenfold. That's right, Emo. You reap what you sow. You under no sir, don't follow the traditions of this society where it's okay to disrespect the ones who brought you here. I don't care if your mama is strung out on drugs. You have no right to disrespect her. Your father's strung out on drugs. You have no right to disrespect them. Walk away. Say, all right, you got it, pops. You got it, moms. I'm going to see you later. And don't walk away with an attitude and talk about, I'm never going to talk to that bee no more. And I, because there's a punishment for that too. It said, all those who curse their parents shall be put to death. So that means the sanctity of parenthood is utmost in the, in the, in the eyes of the creator. That's why right, you read your mind. All that stuff you're saying inside your mind. I hate that so and so. I hope that this happened to them. I hope this, that, and that. because they're telling you right. Listen, all all rebuke is not comely, yeah. especially from parents. That means that all rebuke is not nice. Sometimes you're gonna get smacked in your face. I got smacked in my face. I got beatings. I got all of that. Made me a better person. Told I yeah. But if your mother or your father scared of you, they can't say nothing to you. Because they feel like what might come back is, it might endanger their life. You got to check yourself. Might get a Gaye. Yeah, you might get a Marvin Gaye, and they got the right. And guess what? Marvin Gaye father got up, get, he got out of that. He didn't go to, he went to jail for a little bit, but then after the case was up, they said, hey, we found nothing wrong with what he did. He was being aggressive with his father, putting his hands on his father. Father laid him down, waited for the police. Gun was right on his side. He said, yeah, I shot him and killed him because he put his hands on me. Nobody cares about the world loved Marvin Gaye. Women were falling out for Marvin Gaye, throwing Totten Leem on the stage and all types of stuff. And Marvin Gaye, the sweet crooner. Nobody cared about that. When you look at the right and the wrong in the situation, Marvin was wrong. So these are things that we have to look at and we have to understand. Your mother, man, you see dudes, man, their mother be the last one. You be in court. You be sitting there. You did all types of atrocities. Your mama coming. You're not even your father. Your father gave up on you. Your mama come there. Sit there with you. Bail you out. Put up the house. Do all types of stuff. And then you, you curse out. You got people like that. Monsters. That's a monster. You curse out. You have no respect. No kind of anything to say thank you, Ima. Thank you, Abba. It's just you go straight out. You do what you want to do. No one's going to care more for you than your mother, your father. Those are the people that got the best interest for you in this life. And believe you me, learn to Revere them, cherish them, because you only get one in a lifetime. That's how the song go, right? Always love my mama. You only get one. You only get one. That's it. And once she's gone, and once Abby is gone, that's it. Ask anyone who's lost their parent how they feel about that. So, it said a hint to the wise is sufficient. 
So I hope that you're wise enough to take the hint and get the understanding out of it. And the first thing you do is you humble yourself to your parents, to your mama. And don't stand there and start arguing with them because that ain't going to lead nowhere to but destruction. And if, and, if, and, if, and, if, and if I catch you arguing back and forth with your mama, you might get punched in your face. You get stretched out. If I, if I hear you disrespecting your mama, you might get knocked out. Because that's the way it go. We're not, we not going to tolerate that. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. With that, we're going to move straight ahead. And I'm going to call up the, um, since we're not going to do the Torah reading, I'm going to call up the, um, actually, the Moftir. And that will be my brother, um, More Tavel. Give me one second, More Tavel. Shabbat Shalom, family. First and foremost, I would like to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High Yah, this universe, the God of my ancient forefathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, thanking him for our lives once again, for waking up to see another day of life. It's a blessing. Told our Yah for all things and everything. Hallelujah. Can I be heard? Okay. Okay. The hot tour for this tour for this day, for you for the uh, portion of why it's safe, is going to be found in the book of Hosea, the 11th chapter, 7th verse, to 12th chapter, 12th verse. But first, I would like to give due respect to my father, Colin Mikael. I would like to also give due respect to the Prince of the House, Chief Prince Yeriel ben Yisaska, and thanking the Most High God, and bless, and asking the Most High God really to bless them, their five families, the households, the wives, the children, and everything that they do in righteousness. Naya, hallelujah. We begin in Hosea, the 11th chapter, 7th verse, resuming in the 12th chapter, and the 12th verse. Starts off by saying, And my people are in suspense about returning to me. And though they call them upwards, none at will lift himself up. Now, beginning there, we have to first realize where we where we starting and how this start this portion starts off. It starts off with the prophet Hosea. And Hosea, he prophesied during the reign of Jeroboam and Rehoboam between probably you say about 786 or 746 BC. And the Most High sent him because we have a, pro a problem with committing adultery with other gods. And our relationship, we were not loyal to the Creator at all. We always still have that problem from generation to generation. We always have to stick some other God in there. But at this time, the kingdom was split. We had Rehoboam with two tribes, and we had Jeroboam with the other ten tribes on the other side. So in this portion, you're going to hear about things about them running from, to, from Assyria and coming down. But all of these things are involved in the situation that was happening at the time. But the main thing is that we ran away from the creator like we always do, and we try to find a different way out, just like Chief Uzziah was just speaking about children trying to find a different way out, disrespecting their parents, thinking that they can get away with that. You're going to find yourself a very hard life. And here, we found ourselves in a serious situation. And when it says that my people are in suspense about returning to me, and, you know, the question is, why we have to find ourselves in suspense? What is suspense? A state of condition of mental uncertainty or excitement. That's not why we're not returning to the Most High God. 
Because we in suspense with everything. We in suspense with a lot of stuff, with the style, the latest movies, the latest calls. We excited and want to know about everything. But about serving Yah, that's not really a suspense. In Hebrew, they call it telu'in. And telu'in means to hang on to something, to, you know, hold on to something. And to me, it seems like we have a problem holding on to things that prevent us from returning to the Creator. And that's what I think this is really saying. It's saying we're not in suspense, but we hang on to things that prevent us from allowing the Most High to accept us. And those things, are, so let, we can name some of them. The way we deal with each other. The Most High is not going to accept us hating each other. The Most High will not accept us You know, serving other gods. The Most High is not accepting us wronging other nations either. He's not accepting us doing any wrong. So when we come back to the Creator, we got to come straight up. We can't come with, with our ways side stepping to the Most High. We have to come straight up before this God. And He says, though they call themselves upwards, none at all will lift Himself up. Now, Bad translation again. It says in Hebrew, it says none, even though they call themselves Yaakad, together. Because we like to say we unify. We like to say it's unity. But if it's unity, why God is not dealing with us the way a unified people should be dealt with? Why are we still having confusion and we're not together reaping the blessing of the Creator? Why are some of us going some way and some of us going the other way? Because it goes back to the original point. We're still holding on to things that we prefer to hold on to instead of returning to the Most High. That's the bottom line. And we still, still find ourselves in that position there. Look at us today. You know, some of us can't stop doing certain things. We can't stop... Let's say, let's put it for thing. Watching TV on the Shabbat. Some of us can't stop eating pork. <laughs> Some of us stop, can't stop committing adultery. Some of us can't stop. We have our sisters. Some of us have wandering eyes. We can't stop looking at other women, women husbands. Some of brothers can't stop looking at other men's wives. These are the things that's holding us back. Some of us still stealing from each other. We, the most high is not going to bring it. You think the creator, because we put on some nice clothes and come and worship before God and say, we, you, this is unity, Shabbat. You think God is returning us with that? We could be playing ourselves cheap, man. Because it's not going out like going down like that. But in the eighth verse, he says, how shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I surrender thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? And how shall I set thee up as a boy? He said, my heart is turned within me. My compassion to kindle together. This is a person that really, really loves someone. The Most High is showing that his, his true love and his compassion for Israel. Because he's asking you, said, how shall I give thee up, Ephraim? Now, one of these kings were, was an Ephraimite king. You have to understand, I think it was Yerav. Uh, he was the, an Ephraimite. And he had 10 tribes of Israel with him in Samaria. And that's why the Creator is using Ephraim and calling on Ephraim. Because he was the ruler at that time. He said, how shall I give up on you? Like It's like you telling your children, how can I give up on you? How can I just turn my back on you, let the cops shoot you down in the street, and you go to jail? Without saying nothing. I can't. It's hard. That's what the Creator is saying. Now, verse 9. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. Why? He said, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not come in fury. That shows that the Most High have an everlasting love for his people. He's not like us, man. He don't hold grudges forever. You know what I mean? We don't we hold grudges forever. We hate people. But the most we and, and the funny thing about it, it be sometimes things that don't even affect us, but we still mad at the person. 
Sometimes it do be people things that affect us directly. And we have a right to be angry. But if you can't fix it, you gotta leave it alone. Leave it to Yah. And that's what the, the creator here is saying. He's the power that can fix us. You know what I mean? And we still have a problem with returning unto him. He said, I am God. I'm not man. I don't have the sensitive tendencies that you people have and sometimes bring, you know, to each other. Holding on to stuff. Wickedness in our midst. Be too sensitive to forget to to um tell a dog so and so about his wickedness because I don't know how he's gonna feel. I'm, I'm still his friend. I don't want to deal with him and unright. You know, I don't want him to be mad at me. I know him for years, but he's a sodomite. And there's a judgment for that. We have to do things. A pedophile, a, a adulterer. We can't hold on to stuff. We can't think like an Israelite and want to look through, be an Israelite, but look through the eyes of the American of America. We can't be an Israelite and, and use American vision. Dang. All right, that's my anxiety, man. <laughs> so up, brother. I love you, man. <laughs> but I'm at the ninth verse. It says, I will not exit. No, I'm at the tenth verse. They shall walk after Yehoah, who shall roar like a lion. For he shall roar, and the children shall come trem trembling from the west. They shall come trembling as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria and I will make them to dwell in their houses say if Jehovah you know how the Most High said we're going to be running like this we tried to run from the Most High the Most High brought the Assyrians down on us and some of us ran into Egypt we have to look at that history and we thought we was running away from the Most High God like we do today when a judgment comes from God we think we can run and the Most High said, they shall come trembling, trembling out of Egypt too, as a dove out of the land of Assyria. Because he said, I'm going to run behind those ones that ran into Egypt, punish them still because they think they could get away with stuff, and then I'm still going to love them and bring them back. He said, and I will make them to dwell in their houses, saith Jehovah, the 12th chapter. He find compass of me about with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. And Yehuda is yet wayward towards Yah and towards the Holy One who is faithful. He finds striveth after the wind and followeth after the east wind. All the day he multiplies lies and desolation and they make a covenant with the Syrian and oil is carried into Egypt. Still again, we think that we could get away from the creator. We think that we don't have to do his law so we start getting caught up into the system. They got caught up into the Syrian system. They got caught up into the Egyptian system. They start doing business and trying to make money and um, prevent serving Yehovah. Prevent, um, uh, you know, try to run away from doing his laws. Them things ain't going to work, man. No matter how much things you do, you do in this society, how much you feel you can work besides and outside of Yehovah, I'm going to tell you a proverb. They said, there's no wisdom knowledge or understanding outside of Yehovah. So whatever you think, however you think you could prosper, it's not going to work. If the Most High is not with you, it's not going to work. And Yehovah also has a controversy with Judah and will punish Yaakov according to his ways. According to his doings, will he recompense him. In the womb, he took his brother by the heel, and by his strength, he strove with a godlike being. So he strove with the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him, 
At Bethel, he would find him, and there he would speak with us, giving us a history of what we already know. But Yehoah, the power of hosts, is his name. Yehoah is his name. Therefore, turn thou to thy power. Keep mercy and justice, and wait for thy Elohim continually. As for the trafficker, the balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. And Ephraim said, Surely I, I become rich. I have found me wealth. And all my laborers, they shall find in me no iniquity that was sin. There's no way that you can prosper outside the Creator. Just remember that. Ephraim said he was rich, but Ephraim got his penalty that came in here. He went into captivity along with us. All of us are in captivity now. So no one got away with it. You can't pay your way out of Yahweh's judgment. You can't dodge an omnipresent power because he's everywhere. If you run, you can't hide. Where are you going to hide from an omnipresent power? It's impossible. But I am Yahweh thy Elohim from the land of Egypt. He said, I will yet again make thee to dwell in tents as in the days of appointed season. I have also spoken unto the prophets and I have multiplied visions, and by the ministry of the prophets have I used similitudes. The Most High has given many men, many men, visions for us. We've heard of them all. Some of them are not here, no longer with us. But they all were our seers. They all were our visionaries. We still have them here today. You can call them what you want to call them, but that's who the Creator sent for us to return unto us. The Most High gives us what we deserve. If you think your leader is so bad, you need to get your ways together because that's the leader that God thought you deserved. That's what I always think of. When you have a problem with your leader, think about how you're dealing with God because he gave you what you deserve. Verse 12. If Gilead be given to iniquity, becoming altogether vanity, in Gil Gilgal they sacrifice unto bullocks. Yea, their altars shall be as heaps in the furrows of the field because they still think in Gilead and in them places where they, Israel were, Gilgal, they were sacrificing unto bullocks. Why are they saying unto bullocks? Because they worship the bullocks. They worship the calves. They worship those things. He set up two big uh, calves in, in Samaria for Israel to sin. Those are the things that the Most High is speaking of. We, in this day and time, there's only one thing we have to do. And then that's to do that which is right and pleasing the Creator. We have so much history that tells us what, how bad we were. And then, you know, I'm a person that I don't like to keep going over my bag. You know what I mean? That after a while, I want to just hear positive things. But there are always people that keep bringing up and keep repeating the same things over and over again that make you can't forget that stuff. So what we have to do is separate ourselves and separate yourself in your mind first and in your heart. Because the first thing we have to, the only thing that's going to bring us closer to the creator is separating yourself from evil. And I'm not saying from the camps that you worship in because we use things for our convenience to leave places. And that's not what I'm speaking of. I'm speaking of evil. Evil be at your job. Evil be at your at your Ema house, your father's house, whoever house. It could be at your brother's sister house. It could be at your children's house. But you have to set it straight. You have a responsibility on earth to serve humanity, to serve the creator, to serve Yah in every capacity with all your heart, soul, and might. We have no other choice. He's great by himself. Blessed be his name forever. Hallelujah. It was an honor doing this, this portion. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving all honor and praise, respect, glory, and allegiance to our God and our King. The Holy One, the only one in Israel, we all must say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Thank the most high God for our lives this day. For food, for clothing, for shelter, for good health, for strength, for happiness, and for peace. For his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. Thank the most high God for our brother, Morty Tavell, for his dissertation on the Haftara. He said a lot of important things, brothers and sisters. One of the things that he said was, he said if, if evil is, if you're, if you're following the leader, uh, a leader that's evil, you might want to check yourself because that's what the leader that God saw fit to give you. Yes. Brothers and sisters, it is a beautiful day. It is a beautiful Holy Shabbat day. We must give thanks and praise to this king while we have life. Sing praises to our God while we have any being, brothers and sisters. Don't take life for granted. Don't take your blessings for granted. Thank the most high God for the time that he gave my father, Cohen Levy. Thank the most high God for my Ema who's here and for Emi who's home watching. Thank the most high God for all my family and all your family and all our loved ones. The most high God is good, brothers and sisters. How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? Y'all sound down. How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? That's what I'm talking about. God gave you life this day. God gave you something to eat. He gave you clothes. He gave you shelter. It's a little cold outside. The most high God made sure that you were warm in your home, warm in your car. Most High God gave you heat in that car. That's a blessing, brothers and sisters. Trust me. I bet I was in the car this week that didn't have heat, and I was not happy. I was not happy about that. I said, "What's wrong with this car? There's no heat in here. It's broken. Well, you need to get a new car, because this is not it. Not in this weather, brothers and sisters. I thank the Most High God for heat. I thank the Most High God for hot water. Don't I don't take anything for granted." The Most High God is good to us, brothers and sisters. And I was reading the Psalms this week. It was uh, Psalms 35. And it said that I will give thanks and, and praise unto the Most High in the great congregation. So I said this week, I have to make sure that I thank this great and magnificent God for all the blessings he's shown me in the great congregation. The Most High God sees fit that my job is a little dangerous, but the Most High God makes sure that I'm safe every single day. I can't take that for granted that I get home to my family every single day. And I thank the Most High God because there's things that happen. And this, you, when you're in the streets, it's, things can happen just like that. And when you pray to the Most High and you know that the Most High God got your back, that's a power that you can't, you can't reject, brothers and sisters. I can't deny the greatness and the mercy that the Most High God has shown unto me. So I give thanks and praises unto him on this holy Shabbat day for all the blessings and all the mercies that he's shown unto me, even while I'm at work and even just everyday life. Toda Yehovah for everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the portion today is called Wayetze. It's found in the book of Genesis, the 28th chapter, starting from the 10th verse. And it's a history lesson. It's about our history, brothers and sisters. We're going to get into it. This day, uh, we're going to learn about the, the tribes that are going to be born, brothers and sisters. We're going to learn about somebody named Lavon. We're going to learn about our father, Jacob. We're going to learn a little bit about our family history and see how things go. But, you know, they like to say this word, Lavon. They say, oh, it means transparency. Lavon means white. That's what it means. It's white. And so uh, when, when you hear me say the Lavon name, you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> If I talk about the live I name, that's, I'm talking about them. <laughs> so we're going to learn about this, this person, Lavon. We're going to learn about our history. Brothers and sisters, when you read this book, you should be able to see yourself. You should be able to see your, your family members. You should be able to see something that, that resembles you. And when I read this portion, I can see us, all of us in here. So let's get into this portion. The portion is Wayetse. It means that he went out or to go out, to leave, to flee, to, to go. From the root word is Yatsa. Okay? Let's get into it, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the portion of Wayetse, which is found in the book of Bereshi, which is Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Yaakov went out from Be'er Sheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon the place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took one of the stones of the place and he put it under his head and laid down in that place to sleep. Now remember, Jacob's leaving because what happened with his brother and getting the blessing. He got the blessing from his brother. Esau said that he, he tricked him, but we know that he sold it to him rightfully. And um, so... He's going to, to go to his, to his mother's brother. So on the way there, he falls asleep. He, he says, um, 
The sun sets. So he's going to take a little nap. This reminds me of when we get home or before you before the lights went out, the, your parents told you, make sure your, your behind is home when the lights come on. The street lights come on. All right? It's getting dark, so you better be in the house. So he said, listen, it's time for me to stop traveling because it's dark. And you don't know what's going on in those, in those desert places in the, in, the, in the darkness. Sometimes you can't see. Sometimes there's animals out there. All types of things out there at nighttime. You know what they say comes out at night. Y'all know the song. I don't got to say it. Houdini made it. Y'all know who, what I'm saying, right? Okay, let's read on. And he dreamed, and behold, the ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon Now, it's just a dream. But this is where our people had that, that Negro spiritual, Jacob's Ladder. And they start singing about that stuff. Mm -hmm. We know a good Negro spiritual. A good Negro spiritual. Where, how it go? We are climbing Jacob's Ladder. Y'all know the song. I know my people are here. Some of us came out of the church. <laughs> some of us came out of the church. <laughs> And some of us just came from us. We just read that book. And you could make a hymn out of it. That's what they call it, a hymn. A hymn. Let's read on. And behold, Yehoah stood beside him and said, I am Yehoah, the God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Yitzchak. The land wherein thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. The Most High says he's going to spread us all over. Even though it's a dream, the Most High God is talking to Jacob. Sometimes God talks to us in dreams. You ever had a dream, you woke up, you're like, whew, that was powerful. You know, some of our mothers have this power. They be like, I dream of fish this morning. Someone is pregnant. You be like, when I had you get a fish and... What that got to do with pregnancy? But it happens, and they be right. They be right. He's talking about, oh, I dreamt a fish. Like, what are you? Uh... <laughs> this, you don't want to call them necromancers, but they be right. Sometimes the Most High God reveals things in dreams. I don't think that we've even tapped into our dreams that much. If you think about our history, Yosef could interpret dreams. And all of a sudden, the things that he said happened in his dreams, it came to pass. The baker and the butler, that was true. That happened. Sometimes our dreams, the most high is revealing things in your dreams. Now, I'm not saying every dream means something. If you dreamt that you was going to uh, falling off the river or the bank, that don't mean that you're going to fall off the river. I don't know. Don't think everything means something. But sometimes... Pay attention to your dreams. Let's read on. And in thee, and in thy, and in thy seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Right. And behold, I am with thee. Hold on, can you read that part again? And behold, I am with thee. Right. And will keep thee whithersoever thou goest. Right. And will bring thee back into this land, for mm -hmm. I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to of thee. Right. And Yaakov awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely Yehoah is in this place, and I knew it not. Surely God is in this place, and I didn't even know. He said, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. The same way all the families of the earth will be cursed through us. You can't curse the Israelite. We already blessed. God blessed us a long time ago, brothers and sisters. So you got to walk with your blessing. You got to talk with your blessing. Understand that you have power and might. Just walk in the streets of this, of this place. The Most High God has a shield around you. I walk the streets, man. I feel confident that God got my back, brothers and sisters. And you have to feel the same way. He said, do you, the whole earth is going to be blessed. Let's read. And he was afraid and said, how full of awe is this place? Right. There is none other than the place in the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Right. And Yaakov rose up early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon it to, on the top of it. And he called it. And he called the name of that place Beit El, El, the house of God. But the name of the city was Luz at the first. Luz at the first. You ever notice that a lot of our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters, they have these names like Luz, Luz and Joaquin, Joaquin. They have a lot of biblical names, a lot of biblical names. So he said it was Beit El, but he said it was Luz at the first. I know at least two Luz that I know. And then I just watched the documentary about a place called Luz that you might want to talk about. I'll talk about that later. 
Yeah, losing Spanish means light, according to our brother Uz, but losing Ivri means almond tree. Let's read. And Yaakov vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in the way that I go, and I will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then shall Yehoah be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give unto me, I will surely give a tenth unto thee. So now he said, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, that I come back to my father's house in peace, then shall Yehoah be my God. Yah was already his God. But he's saying it like, God, if you got me, if you give me everything that I'm praying for and do everything that I'm asking for, then for sure you are of a surety my God and my king. And I look at this and I said, this is something that we could use ourselves. We can use this method of prayer. Yeah, if you may, yeah, if you help me win the Powerball, then for sure you are my God. <laughs> I'm gonna see if that worked tonight. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, read this history and look at yourself. This is a good method of praying. He's saying, if you do this for me, yeah, for sure you're gonna be my God. For sure you are the God who answers prayers. For sure you're the God who hears prayers. Use this method. Let's read. 29 verse 1, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Yaakov went on his journey and came to the land of the children of the east. Mm -hmm. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, three flocks of sheep lying there by it. For out of that well they watered the flock, and a stone upon the well's mouth was great. Right. And thither were all the flocks gathered. And they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, and, though, and put the stone back upon the well's mouth in its place. And Yaakov said unto them, My brethren, whence are ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye but Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We, we know, know him. And he said unto them, Is all well with him? And they said, It is well. And behold, Raquel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye your sheep and go feed them. And they said, We cannot until the flocks be gathered together, and they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. While he was yet speaking with them, Raquel came with her father's sheep, for she tended to them. And it came to pass, when Yaakov saw Raquel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Yaakov went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth. And watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. So now, there's a procedure that they have going on. They said they don't do anything until all the sheep, all the flocks are gathered together. And then they roll this great stone. It said a great stone from the mouth of the thing. And then they water. But Jacob said, I got this. When he saw Raquel, he said, I got it. Show his muscle. Everybody think of Jacob as being some soft, scrawny, weak. Jacob wasn't weak. Or scrawny. Remember, Jacob and Esau were twins. If, if Esau was a mighty man, he was out there in the hunter, Jacob had to be the same build as him. Because when, when, when Yitzchak felt for him, he said, oh, it feels like my son. Felt the hair and everything. But it had to be the same muscular build as well. So Jacob wasn't no slouch. Jacob said, I got this. Move the rock, move the thing, and said, all right, I'm going to water the flock. He's trying to impress her. He's trying to impress her from day one. He said, I got this. Don't worry about this, boo-boo. <laughs> got this. Don't hurt yourself, though. You got you to gotta impress. You see, I saw a meme the other day. It said that when, when, the, when the brother at the church is trying to impress a sister at the church, the way he impresses her, he picks up about 10 chairs for the lunch time. He's, he's like this. How are you impressed? See this, sister? Set this up. I got this. Set this up. I don't carry no drums. I ain't picking up nothing. I, I'm, I'm not doing that. Let's read. And Yaakov kissed Raquel mm -hmm. and lifted up his voice and wept. And Yaakov told Raquel that he was a father's brother and that he was Rebecca's son. Right. And she ran and told her father. Right. She, told him, she had to go back. Listen, I just met my cousin. I just met my family. We out here. He's happy. Let's read. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Yaakov, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him. Of course he did. Y'all remember what Laban did last time, right? 
when he saw those jewels and he saw that gold on his sister, he said, oh, oh, this is my sister's son. Let me go and greet him. Because he remembered that money. He remembered that cash, that gold. Let's read. And brought him to the house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said unto him, surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Surely thou art my family. Come in here, nephew. I got you. And he abode with him the space of a month. Stay with him for a month. And Laban said unto Yaakov, because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Yeah, he said, listen, you're my, you're my family, but should you just be working around here for nothing? What, what, what do we want? Let me, talk to me. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Yeah, what should I pay you? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. This is where, it gets, this is where the story picks up, brothers and sisters. And the name of the younger was Raquel. Uh-huh. And Leah's eyes were weak. Now, I don't know why they said that. Leah's eyes were weak. She wasn't ugly. Her eyes were weak. Whatever that means, her eyes were weak. I don't know what that means. But it doesn't mean that she was ugly. They're, they're sisters. Let's read. But Raquel was a beautiful form and fair to look upon. But they did make mention of this. Now, she was fair and beautiful form. No, it said she was beautiful form and fair to look upon. She was beautiful. They made sure that they said Raquel was beautiful. No blemishes. Her eyes are not weak. Let's read. That's how I'm leaving it. Her eyes was not weak. <laughs> and Yaakov loved Raquel. And he said, I will serve thee seven years for Raquel, thy younger daughter. Now listen, he said out his mouth, I'm going to serve you seven years for your daughter, Raquel. Now y'all all read that, right? We all heard him say seven years for Raquel. Let's read. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Yaakov served seven years for Raquel. Mm -hmm. And they seemed as a few days That's for the few. love he had for her. Oh, man. He was smitten. He was smitten. He said, it's seven years. Seven years felt but a few days for baby girl. He said, oh, she's so beautiful. He was working the land. He working. He watching her. He picking up rocks and doing all this stuff. And it's nothing to him because it's... He just know at the end of the day, he knows what's the, the, the prize at the end is going to be his beautiful lady. That's the reward. So he's working this nothing. 365, nothing. Another 365, nothing. He did it like nothing. Seven years. So then seven years go by. Let's read. And Yaakov said unto Laban, give me my wife. Give me my wife. For my days are... Hold on, hold on. He said, give me my wife. He finished that. It was probably that last day of work of the year. That seventh year hit. You know how some people be locked up and they be like, I've been locked up for 365 days and two, 29 hours and seven minutes. They got it down to the T. Yeah. Jacob had it down to the T. Seventh year is tomorrow. Tomorrow came, he woke up, got dressed, went to Lavon and said, give me my wife. That's what I want. Give me mine. Now look. For my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. I did my work. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place. Uh -huh. And he made a feast. A feast. Now in the Ivory, they say Mishche. Mishche is drinks. Mm -hmm. A lot of drinks. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a feast. It was Mishche. They had the, the pure white Hennessy. <laughs> I said they had the. The, 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 the vodka, they had the rum, they had the Remy Martin. I'm talking top shelf. They had the top shelf stuff. Beer. They had beer for all my beer drinkers. <laughs> they had everything. He said, Mish Tay. They going to drink and have a good time. You know why? Because it's a ceremony. It's a wedding going on. Let's hear this. And it came to pass in the evening. Uh-oh. That he took Leah, his daughter. Uh -oh. And brought her unto him, and he went into her. Whoa! Keep going. And Laban gave Zilpah his handmaid unto his daughter, Leah for a handmaid. And it came to pass in the morning. Behold, it was Leah? 
and he said to Lavon, what hold is on. this that thou hold hast on, done? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How much mischief did jo Jacob have? How much, how, see, listen, listen. Focus, I don't even think focus is the word we could use right now. What happened? Listen, he he was he was just drunk probably. He's probably like out of it. He know what he's supposed to be getting, so he's thinking that Lavon is an upstanding person too. That surely this won't this trick or rule won't happen on me. It's gotta be. He didn't even think about it. Why would you consider that? So now he finishes mischief. He goes into the young lady, and this is how you know they had to be similar build as well. Because there's no way you could, if your sisters, one look like olive oil you, and one look like something else, <laughs> that you're going to be able to not determine based on the bone structure who's who. One, one to kill her, two to kill her, three to kill her, floor. This, yeah, the, the, when, the, when the Remy's in the system, ain't no telling, <laughs> right? So now, the bone structure must be similar. So now, he wakes up. And he says what? What is this that thou hast done unto me? What did you do? Did I not serve thee for Leah? That ain't Raquel. Did I not, did I not serve thee for Raquel, my fault? That ain't Raquel. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? You tricked me. And Laban said, Now listen to this. It is not done so in our place <laughs> to give the younger before the firstborn. So hold on. Hold on, Laban. Lavanim. Laban. Why didn't you tell me this from the beginning? It's not a custom amongst us in this place that we give the younger before the elder. She couldn't get married in seven years? You, you, right. What, what, what were you doing during the seven years that I was working? She couldn't get married in seven years? Why did you find somebody for her in the seven years? Am I the only straggler around this part of town? That, that show. <laughs> that show. Yeah. So now he pulled the okie doke on him. He said, he said, listen to, listen to this. Go ahead. Fulfill a week of this one. The week? And we will give thee the other also for the service which thou shalt serve me yet another seven years. Come on, hold on now. So now I got to do a 14-year bid. 14-year bid. I did the seven. Now I got to do another seven for the woman that I actually want that I served the first seven for. So now you're starting to see the integrity of Lavon is going down the drain. Because he has no integrity. You serve seven years for Raquel. At the end of the seven, you don't get her. In fact, you get somebody completely different. And now, you want me to serve another seven to get the woman that I actually worked the first seven for. Y'all got to make me understand this. Let's read on. And Yaakov did so. Mm -hmm. And fulfilled her week, and he gave him Raquel, his daughter, to wife. Right. And Laban gave to Raquel, his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her husband. So, her now, handmaid. so now he got Leah, Zilpah, Raquel, Bilhah. And all he wanted was Raquel. Let's read. And he went in also unto Raquel. And he loved Raquel more than Leah. And served with him yet seven other years. He loved her. See, I don't like that part because they say he loved her more. But that's who he wanted from the beginning. Absolutely. He worked the seven for her. Right. Now I'm working another seven for the one that I wanted from the beginning. Right. Trickery. Trickery. Let's read. And Yehoah saw that Leah was hated. And he opened up her womb, but Raquel was barren. So now, this is where God comes into play. Because everything is God's plan. No matter what, everything happens for a reason according to the plan of the almighty God. So although we look at it from a human perspective and human eyes and human feelings, God is in every matter. And he's been in this matter from the beginning. Let's read. 
And Leah conceived and bore a son. And she bore a son. And she called his name Reuben. For she said, because Yehoah have looked upon my affliction, and now my husband will love yeah, me. Yeah, because she's like, I got a baby now. Leah's thinking, I got a baby, a baby boy. He has to love me. Reuben, behold the son. You have to embrace me now. You got to love me. Jacob got to love me now. Got to. Let's read. And she conceived again and bore a son. And she said, because Yehoah have heard that I am hated and have therefore given me this son also. So now and I she often, called his name Shimon. I often think if this is just Leah just saying that she was hated. Not also that the Most High is saying that she's hated. I'm saying that she's like, God, give me another son. And that he knows that I'm, I'm feeling this way. I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling this pain. So God is blessing me with another son. So now his name is Shimon. Continue. And she conceived again uh. and bore a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. To mean to join. Levi, to join. So now, say what you want. Leah might be feeling this way. She's saying she's hated. But Jacob keep going to that tent. <laughs> she's having seed. Jacob is going to that tent. So you can say what you want. Hate it or love it. The underdog's on top. <laughs> Let's read. And she conceived again mm -hmm. and bore a son. Uh huh. And she said, this, this time, time I will praise Yehoah. Therefore, she called his name Yehuda, Yehuda, and she left off bearing. Right. And scene one. <laughs> so, <laughs> and scene one. So now, she had four children, four boys, back to back to back. So, y'all know, just like I know, nine months has to go by. This is years is passing. Passing time. Raquel still didn't bring no children. And she's still feeling the way she's feeling. Yes, he loved her and he feels for her, but she's not bearing children. She's barren. So now Leah has the four children. You think that she's not walking around with her four boys like, come on, boys. <laughs> dressing, them, dressing them up the same garments and everything. Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, come on, go, go. Take your, your 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 other your other auntie mother slash mother something to eat. Oh, y'all don't know Israelites? Y'all don't know Israelites? Y'all don't know Israelites? Go take go take my sister, your other mother, your your doda, some 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 uh, mandrakes. Tell her maybe you could use this. Tell us on me. It's on the house. I'm telling you, I know my people. Tell her it's on me. Go on, go on over there. Go on over there. Oh, don't play too close to her house. I don't want y'all to knock nothing over. You know, it's her house already broken up. <laughs> Let's read, brothers and sisters. Chapter 30, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Raquel saw that she bore Yaakov no children, uh -huh. Raquel envied her Envy sister. Envied her sister. And she said unto Yaakov, Listen give to me this. children or else I die. Whoa. Give me children or else I die now. Listen. Boo boo. It's not my fault. I'm, I'm doing the do. Obviously it's not me. It's not me. You know, that's men's favorite line. It ain't me. I got four. I got children. It ain't me. She mad. She said, give me children else I die. But guess what? Look, let's read. And Yaakov's anger was kindled against Raquel. And Why? Said, Why? Am I in God's stead who have withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? That is like, listen, that is what you call the old ancient cursing. That is harsh. Y'all got to read this. Read that again, brother. Read what he said. Am I in God's stead? Who have withheld from thee the fruit of the womb. He basically said in the words of the great Master P. It ain't my fault. It ain't my fault. It ain't me. He said am I in God's stead? Because guess what? All jokes aside everything comes from the creator. Amen. And at this moment she's forgetting that God is still in control. God controls the womb. God is the one who brings life into this place. 
Not nobody else. God does it. Listen, I've seen brothers and sisters at the tip top health. It's shape, good shape. The brothers running, doing track and doing all types of things. The sisters in good health and everything. And they're trying to conceive and they don't conceive. It is up to God. God controls that. So when it all comes down to it, don't get upset with each other. Build your bond, get closer, and pray to God. Because God is the one that answers that prayers. Listen, you don't think that Jacob knew about Yitzchak and his mother? You don't think he knew about his grandfather, Abraham and Ema Sarah? You don't think they knew about this? He told them about this. They Listen, he's probably had to explain to her, listen, baby, it's okay. We're going to be all right. My father and my mother took 20 years before they conceived and had me and my brother. He had to say things like that. It don't help at the moment, I can tell you. It don't help, but guess what? You still got to rely on the almighty God. Amen. The one who said, let there be light, and there was light, is the same one who brings life into this world. When it all said and done, call on God. Amen. Let's read. And she said, behold, my maid Bilhah. I got a plan. Go into her that she may bear upon my knees. Because guess what? The same way his grandfather was telling, I mean, he knew about his grandfather and Ema Sarah. He knew about Ema Hagar too. I need y'all to understand that. That the story is basically the same over and over and over again. So the same way she knew, all right, if she's barren, Ema Sarah told Hagar, go with Abraham. So maybe this will work on my behalf. So this is where this comes in. Let's read. And I also may be builded up through her. Mm hmm and she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife. Mm -hmm. And Yaakov went in unto, uh, unto her, and Bilhah conceived, mm -hmm. and bore Yaakov a son. And Raquel said, God have judged me, and have also heard my voice, and have given me a son. Therefore she called his name Don. Right. And, Bil, and Bilhah, Ra Raquel's handmaid, conceived again, and bore Yaakov a, a second, second son. son. And Raquel said, with mighty wrestlings, have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. So now, Bilhah has children. She has Don and Naphtali. But Raquel is taking those as those are her own children because that's her handmaid. So now she's like, I have children. I have my two. But guess what? It's not the same. It's not the same, brothers and sisters. So now she's like, all right, I got these two, Don and Naphtali. But they're not mine biologically. So let's read on. This story is getting, it's getting good. And when Leah saw that she had left off bearing, she took Zilpah, her handmaid, and gave her Yaakov to wife. This is not checkers. This is Jess. You gave her Bill, huh? Hey, Zil. Zili. Come on over here, Zilpah. Come on over here. Let me tell you something. I got a job for you. Listen. Zili, listen here. You going to go in there and do what I'm telling you to do. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying, Zil? All right. This is a contract that's being made. They are working against each other. They are, this is chess, not checkers. You got Billy going in there. I got Zilly over here. We're going to do this. Billy and Zilly. That's right. Come on. Go, Zilpa. Go handle your business. But remember, poor Jacob. <laughs> My man Jacob is just like, yo, listen. Listen, man. He's getting used and abused. <laughs> He's getting used and abused. Hey, 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 hey. You over here tonight, my boy. Come on over here tonight. You ain't going over there. Let's read. And Leah said, Fortune has come. Fortune. And she called his name God. Mm -hmm. And Zilpah lay his handmaid boy Yaakov a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me happy. And she called his name Asher. Uh-huh. Now listen to this. It gets, it gets interesting. And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest. Uh-huh. And found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto Leah his mother. Uh-huh. Then Raquel said unto Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. Uh-huh. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken away my husband? Would thou take away my son's mandrakes also? Whoa! Hold on! That was Leah that said that. Did y'all read that? Yeah. Leah said, it's, it's, 
you gonna take my son's man? It's already that you done took my man. You already took my man, my husband, and now you want to take my son's mandrakes too? She throwing super shade out there. She said, she, yeah, she forgot that, uh, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, you, you wasn't a part of this. It was supposed to just be me and, 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 and Jacob, but she forgot. Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> It was supposed to be me and Jake. Me and Jakey. You done, you done made it about yourself, huh, Leah? Huh, huh, huh. Little necro here. This is getting out of pocket. This is out of control. Let's read some more. This is our family. I see this. Let's read. And Raquel said, therefore he shall lie with thee tonight. Uh-oh. For thy son's marriage. Hold on. Did she just pay off? Did she just pay off? Leia for her husband. She said, listen, I'm giving these mandrakes and you're going to keep them tonight. But I need these mandrakes because mandrakes was a, was a, 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 a herb or fruit or, or a, a aphrodisiac that they believe help people get pregnant. So they said, listen, you're going to take these mandrakes. I need these mandrakes, okay? Leia, I need them more than you right now. <laughs> I need them more than you right now. Give me these mandrakes and you take him tonight. So now poor Jacob is out there working, doing his thing. Let's read. And Yaakov came in from, from the field. From in the, the what? Evening, from the field. From the field. He was working. He was working. He came home from the field and now what happens? And Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come. Because he probably was making a beeline, possibly to Raquel's house or tent. And he going to the east, and she said, bring it over to the west. The west side is the best side. Come this way. So now he was going this way. She said, hey, come over here. I, I, I paid for you. I, I, I paid those mandrakes for you tonight. Be there or be square. Let's read. For I have surely hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And what'd he do? And he lay with her that night. Yes, he did. He and did God, what he had to do. Let's read. And God hearkened unto Leah. And she conceived and bore Yaakov a fifth a son. A fifth son. And Leah said, God has given me my hire Ooh. because I have gave my handmaid to my husband. And she called his name Yisachar. Uh. And Leah conceived again. And bore. And bore a sixth son to Yaakov. Leah is and, not playing. And Leah said, God have endowed me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me because I have borne him six, six sons. sons. And she called his name Zavulun. And afterwards she bore a daughter and called her name Dina. And just another daughter just for good measure. <laughs> Listen, she gave him six boys. Six boys and one girl. And her handmaid got two. So she's up eight. <laughs> she's, up, she's really up nine because Dina, she's up nine. She's up nine to, 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 to two. This is what's happening, brothers and sisters. This is the handmaid. And Dina, my boy's having the time. You in college. <laughs> you in college now. You got to add that quicker than that. <laughs> Let's read. Damn. And God remembered Raquel. Uh -huh. And God hearkened unto her and opened her womb. How many years y'all think passed? How many years y'all think passed? Some time passed. Reuben was out in the field. Getting mandrakes. Some time passed. Let's read. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Yosef, saying, Yehoah, add, add to, to me, me another son. And y'all know how great Yosef will become for the nation. Not just for the family, for the nation. He said, she said, God has taken away my reproach. So the two that her handmaid had, it was hers, but clearly she still felt the way. Let's read. 
And it came to pass when Raquel had bore, born Yosef that Yaakov said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go in my own place. Right. To my own country. Right. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service whereof I have served thee. And Laban said unto him, If now I have found favor in thine eyes. I have observed the signs and Yehoah have blessed me for thy sake. That's right. And he said, Appoint me thy wages and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle have fed with me. For it was little which thou hadst when I came, and it has increased abundantly, and Jehovah has blessed thee whithersoever I turned. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? Listen, y'all got to see what Jacob is saying. Y'all, re we reading it in the biblical form, but Jacob is talking his mess right now. Right. Jacob is letting you know, you was nothing without me. I got all, you got everything you got because of me. He understood, he understood that the blessing was going through him. It's not about you, Lavon. You got this because of me. So he's telling them, listen, I'm, I'm ready to go. It's time for me to go. Let's read. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Yaakov said, thou shall not give me aught. <laughs> right, I don't want nothing. I have everything. Well, I don't need you. If thou will do this thing for me, I will again feed thy flock and keep it. Right. He's I telling them, let me go. Let me go. I'll Listen, the last time, I'll feed the flock and I'll do what I got to do. But let me go. I'm just ready to go. I got my family. We're spreading out. We got our own. You got your own. Let's just go our separate ways. I will pass through all thy flock today. Removing from thence every speckled and every spotted one. Uh -oh. And every dark one among the sheep and the spotted and the speckle among the goats. And of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness witness against me hereafter. Right. When thou shalt come to look over my hire that is before thee. Every one that is not speckled or spotted among the goats. And dark among the sheep. That if it be found with me shall be counted stolen. Right. And Laban said. Behold would it be might according to thy word. And he removed that day the he goats, and he removed that day the he goats that were streaked and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white in it, and all the dark ones among the sheep, and gave them into the hands of his sons. And he set three days' journey between himself and Yaakov, and Yaakov fed the rest of Laban's flock. Mm -hmm. And Yaakov took him rods of fresh poplar, and of the almond and of the palm tree, and peeled white, with streaks in them, making the white appear which was in the rods and he set the rods which that have he had peeled over against the flocks in the gutters and in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink and they con and and they conceived and when they came to drink the flocks conceived at the sight of the rods and the flocks brought forth streaks speckled and spotted the same ones that Jacob said he would keep so now again the most high is in every matter the most high is Telling Jacob what to do with this. He takes these things and he puts it in the thing. And when they conceive, they're coming out shriek, speckled, and spotted. The most high God is great, brothers and sisters. This is, we might look at this as like some sort of trickery or sorcery. The most high God is telling him exactly what to do. And we're going to read that later. Let's see. And Yaakov se separated the lambs. He also set the faces of the flocks toward the streaks and all the dark of the flock of Laban. Mm. And put his own droves apart. And put them not unto Laban's flock. And it came to pass. Whensoever the stronger of the flock did conceive that Yaakov laid the rods before their eyes in the flock and in the gutters. That they might conceive among the rods. Right. But when the flock were the feeble, feeble, he put them not that's in. That's right. So the feebler were Laban's and, and the, the stronger, stronger Yaakov's. And the man increased exceedingly and had large, large flocks and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. Right. Let's read. Chapter 31, verse 1, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Yaakov has taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father's, have he had gotten all his wealth. So now, Laban's sons are the same character as he is. They're talking trash. They're like, yeah, this guy is stealing all our stuff. He's taking everything that, I was, that was our father's. And Jacob heard it. Jacob's like, hold on. Did they just say I stole this? I'm taking this from them? Let's read on. And Yaakov beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. Time. Right, because before, Laban would greet him and say, hey, Shalom, nephew, what's going on? Come on over here. And now it's none of that now. 
It's so, what's going on, man? How you, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. You good? Yes, I, is you good? Oh, all right, all right, all right then. Short answer. Let's read. And Yehovah said unto Yaakov, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will That's be with right. thee. And Yaakov sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field of his, to the field unto his flock. And he said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before time, but the God of my father hath been with me. That's right. And ye know that with all my power I have served thy father. And with your father and your father have mocked me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. That's right. And he said thus, if he said thus the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the flocks bore speckle. And if he said, Thus the street shall be thy wages, then the then the, bore all the flock street. Thus God has taken away the cattle of your father and given them unto me. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass at the time that the flock conceived, that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the he goats which leaped upon the flock were streaked and speckled, uh, speckled and grizzled. That's right. And the angel of Jehovah came unto me in a dream and said, Yaakov. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see. All the he goats which leaped upon the flock that streaked and speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Lavan doeth unto thee. That's the point right there, brothers and sisters. He said God came to him in a dream. But guess what was more important? God said, I see what he's been doing to you. Amen. So when we look about ourselves and we see the times and the trials and tribulations that we're in, best believe and know and understand that God sees what we're going through. Amen. And God is going to deliver us. God watches us all. That's why, listen, when my brother Chief Uzio was talking about parents this morning, super important. You know you can talk behind your parents' back, but guess who sees it all? The creator. There's no getting away from God. There's no getting away from an omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent being. You could talk all the trash you want. You could say all the things you want. You could do what you want, but guess what? God sees it all. And even at the end of the day, when you think that you got away with something, you didn't. Did he not say, I will pay yours to, to their face? He said, to your face. Do you understand that? You don't want that kind of smoke. You don't want smoke with God. He said, I will pay you to your face. You got people that's in the streets that won't even repay each other to their face. They'd rather shoot from three blocks away and hit the wrong person. But God said, I will pay you to your face. I mean, he coming to you personally. And saying, remember when you did that thing? Remember that? And he going, he said, visiting the iniquities upon the children's children. Listen, brothers and sisters, God is telling you what he do. We're the only ones that forget. God told you, listen, don't play with me. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a play, play God. I'm not a false God. Let's read. I am the God of Bethel. That's right. Where thou didst anoint the pillar, where thou didst vow a vow unto me. He just want him to remember, this is the same God that you prayed to. I want you to know it's me. Now arise, get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy nativity. Mm -hmm. And Raquel and Leah answered and said unto him, is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? <laughs> Are we not accounted as him as strangers? Right. But he have sold us. And has quite devoured our price. Now listen. What happened right here was. Jacob was pleading his case to his nashim. To his woman. He's like listen. Y'all know that your father did me dirty. And I did this and that and the third. And I did everything he asked for. And then when, he, when it was basically their time to speak. They was like. Basically riding with him. Like you right. Ish. We remember everything. And he took away our stuff too. So they all in cahoots. So now they know they joined it together. So they like. Whatever you say y'all quote. We down with it. For all the riches which God has taken away from our father, that is our and ours and our children. That's right. Now then, whatsoever God have said unto thee, do. Do whatever you got to do, husband. Then Yaakov rose and set his sons and his wives upon camels. Right. And he carried away all his cattle mm -hmm. and all his substance which he had gathered. Right. The cattle of his getting which he had gathered in Padan Aram to go to Yitzchak, his father, unto the land of Canaan. That's right. Now Laban was going to share his sheep, mm -hmm. and Raquel had stolen the teraphim, which was her father's. Now, I don't know why she did that. I don't know why she took it. I try to look it up and read into different things, and 
you know, those, those commentaries be so off the wall sometimes. But nonetheless, she took the teraphim, which is a false god, which means that Lavon was into some stuff. That whole region over there was into some stuff. So it wasn't like a big thing that she took it. It's just a matter, matter of fact that you know that your husband's not into that. You know that your husband is, is about the creator. So why would you do that? But she did it nonetheless. Let's read. And Yaakov outwitted Laban the Aramean. He outwitted in, him. In that he told him not that he had fled. Yeah, because if I tell you that I'm leaving, you're going to stop me. And you're going to find a different way for me to understand that I need to stay. Because Laban is very tricky. So he fled with all that he had and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward the mountain of Gilead. Mm -hmm. And it was told Laban on the third day that Yaakov was fled. And he took his brethren with him and he pursued after him seven days journey. Right. And he overtook him in the mountain of Gilead. And God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream of the night and said unto him, Take, Take heed to, to yourself, that thou speaketh not to Yaakov either, neither good nor bad. Now listen to that. God came to Lavan and said, don't talk to Jacob, neither good nor bad. So what does that mean? No, that means don't say nothing. <laughs> don't say nada. If I can't speak to you good and I can't speak to you bad, I can't say anything. It means go home. Leave Jacob alone. Don't say nothing. He said, don't talk to him good or bad. Let's read. Let's see if it stops Lavan. And Laban came up with Yaakov. Now Yaakov had pitched his tent in the mountain. And Laban with his brethren pitched his tent in the mountain of Gilad. And Laban said unto Yaakov, What is thou hast done that thou hast outwitted me? And carried away my daughters as though captives of the sword. So now he's trying to, in the beginning, he's making it about the daughters. And like, yo, you took my daughters a captive. What's up with that? Wherefore didst thou flee secretly? And I with me, and didst not tell me right. that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with song. Now he's trying to jim. Oh, yo, you left, and I would, I would have sent you, sent you away off with a party and some drinks and some mirth, and, and hooked you up with gifts and presents. Yo, why'd you do that? And didst not suffer me to kiss my son. Yeah, you didn't let me kiss, say shalom to my grandkids, my granddaughter, my daughters. What's wrong with you? And my daughters. Now hast thou done foolishly. If it was in the power of my hand, to <laughs> do you hurt. But the God of your father spoke unto me yesterday, saying, Take heed to thyself, that thou speak not to Yaakov, either good or bad. Now, hold on. Is Lavon talking trash or not? He basically said to him, he said, It is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. Y'all should punch you in your face. That's what he said. That's what he said. Now, I should punch you in your face. It's in my power to hurt you right now. But, I, but God spoke to me and said, don't talk to you good or bad, which he's doing right now. Let's read. And now that thou art surely gone, because thou so longest after your father's Yeah, house. now all of a sudden you want to leave, and I'm hooking you up all these years. Go ahead. Wherefore hast thou stolen my God? And now it's about this. Before it was about that, now it's about this. What do you mean I stole your God? What gods? Let's read. And Yaakov answered and said unto Laban, Because I was afraid. For I said, Lest thou shouldest take thy daughters from me by force. That's right. Because if I'd have came to you, you would have took them by force. With whomsoever thou findest thy gods, he shall not live. Hold on. Hold on. In this very book, we get a lot of people that make what they call spontaneous utterances. That says things that they shouldn't say. That they don't have any clue of. This is one of them. Whoever got the guards, they're not going to live. I don't even know that your wife took this thing. Let's read. Before our brethren discern what is, what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Yaakov knew not that Raquel had stolen it. He didn't know. And Laban went into Jacob's tent. Now he's going through like a bully. And into Leah's tent. Going through each tent. And into the tent of the two maidens. Mm -hmm. But he found them not. Right. And he went out from Leah's tent and entered into Raquel's tent. Uh -huh. Now Raquel had taken the teraphim right. and put them in the saddle of the camel and sat upon them. And Laban felt about all the tent, but found them not. Now look at this. And she said unto her father, let not my lord be angry 
that I cannot rise up before thee, for the manner of women is upon me. Now, this makes me understand and know that when children spoke to their parents, they rose. Because she clearly states, sorry, father, I can't stand right now for the man of woman is upon me. But had it been any other time, she would have rose up to greet her father. She would agree to him in some way, but she definitely would have rose. And that's why we, I, they always say, rise for the hoary head, because that's a command. But also, I truly believe that when you speak to your parents, you don't speak to them while you're sitting down and they're standing up. You always rise before your parents. Always. And this is clear. He said she rose and said, I'm sorry, I can't rise because the man of woman is upon me. Let's read. And he searched but found not the teraphim. Right, because she's sitting on it. And Yaakov was wroth and strove with Laban. And Yaakov answered to Laban. Because now at this point, Jacob looks very innocent, not knowing that Raquel has the teraphim. So now he's like, you went through all my stuff? Now listen to this verbal lashing that Yaakov is about to give him. Answered and said to Laban. What is my trespass? And what is my sin that thou hast hotly pursued after me, whereas thou hast felt about all, all my, my stuff? stuff? What hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Nothing. Set it here before my brethren and our brethren that they may judge between yeah, us. Yeah, he's like, where is that? You said we took your guards. Bring it out. Bring it out. He's tight. He's mad. Let's read. These 20 years have I been. Oh, now it's all coming up. These 20 years. 11 years. I swear. <laughs> Y'all know it. That's what he's feeling like. Feeling like Mary Jane. 11 years. Swallow my pride. Besides the kids, I have nothing to show. She, he mad. Big mad. <laughs> Let's read. Thy youths and our she-goat have not cast their young. Mm -hmm. And the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. Right. That which was torn of beasts, I, I brought, brought it not unto thee. thee. I bore the loss. I bore the loss. Of my hand that is thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Uh -huh. Thus was I in the day when drought consumed me. Right. And the frost by night. And my sleep fled, fled from my eyes. These, These 20, 20 years have, have I been, been in thy house, house. And served thee 14 for thy, thy two daughters, daughters. And six years for thy flock. And now has changed my wages ten, ten times. times. Not to mention the fact that I only wanted Raquel. Continue. <laughs> Except the God of my father, Ooh. the God of Abraham, and the fear of Yitzchak had been on my side, surely thou would have sent me away empty. That's right. God have seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and have gave judgment yesternight. Mm -hmm. And Laban answered and said unto Yaakov, the daughters are my daughters. <laughs> And the children are my children. Listen, we can say what we want. Lavon is gangster. He don't care about nothing. He's like, he listened to that whole speech and sat there and came up with this answer. The daughters are mine. <laughs> that guy is crazy. Let's read. And the flocks are my flocks. <laughs> and all that thou seest is mine. Everything is mine. What can I do for these, for the, this day, my daughters? Or for thy children, for their children which they have born. And now, come let us make a covenant. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. After all that, talking trash, it's my daughters, my flocks. Let's make a deal, brother. Come on. Come on. Let's let's talk about this. Let's let's see. What we what, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? Let's make this right, brother. Let's reason. Man. Let's reason. I and thou. And let it be for a witness between me and thee. Mm. And Yaakov took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Yaakov said unto his brother, Gather stones. And they took stones. And they, they made, made a heap. heap. And they did and they did eat there by the heap. And Laban called it Yegod Haik Sayahasuta. Mm -hmm. But Yaakov, Yaakov called it Galim. Galim. That's right. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Mm -hmm. Therefore was the name of it called Galim. And, and Mishpah. For he, he said... said Yehoah, watch between That's me right. and thee when thou art at when we are absent one from another. Mm -hmm. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, and if thou shalt take wives besides my daughters, no man seeing us, God is witness between me and thee. And Laban said to Yaakov, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar which I have set up between me and thee. This heap be witness, and the pillar be witness that I will not pass over the heap to thee, and thou shalt not pass over this heap. And this pillar for me for harm. That's right. So you go your way, I'm going to go my way. 
the God of Abraham, and the God of Nahor, the God of their father judge between us. And Yaakov swore by the fear of his father Yitzchak. And Yaakov offered a sacrifice in the mountain and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mountain. Mm -hmm. Chapter 32, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And early in the morning, Yah Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters. And he blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. Good riddance. And Yaakov went on his way. And the angels of God met him. And Yaakov said when he saw them, this is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Machanayim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is two camps. Machanayim. Two camps. Brothers and sisters, this is our history. It's a blessing to read and get into this book and understand it and see ourselves and see our forefathers and our foremothers. Brothers and sisters, it's a blessing to be alive and well. And I thank the almighty God for this opportunity to speak before you. And I thank the most high God for all things and for everything. Hallelujah. Hold on, real quick, real quick. I forgot to tell you a quick story because I said I would talk to, to the Most High God in the midst of the congregation and tell him how great he is unto me. So the other day, brothers and sisters, I had court on Tuesday. So I woke up Tuesday morning and I said, I don't want to go to court. I did, for whatever reason, something came upon me. I said, I don't want to go to court. So I prayed about it. I said, Yah, please, please let me not have court today. Please, for whatever reason, I prayed about it. So I get there, right? I get on the block. On the block of the courtroom, there's a big fire. It's a big fire right in front of the courtroom. I, it looked like the whole courtroom is, the whole building's on fire. So I said, oh my God, God done burnt down the building for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm like, oh my God. So now I'm also thinking, I'm him. I'm about to go on a zapping spree because God done burnt down the building for me. I'm gonna be like, I'm him. I'm going to zap this one and zap that one. I'm like, I'm him. I'm feeling like I'm him, him Duncan. I'm Timothy Jones right now. I am Carlos Jimenez. I am him. So I'm like, I'm going to do it. So then, after further inquiry, there was just some cardboards in front of the building and somebody burnt down the cardboards. So court was still on. I had court at one o'clock. I go in the building. I say, yes, sir, I was here. They say, your case is uh, postponed. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm still him. Zap, 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 I can do it. God is great, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, <laughs> Hallelujah. thank you the most, our God, for our brother, um, Chief Mekubadia, and for the words, the positive words to be able to enjoy this Torah, be able to listen to it and, and have a good time as you're listening to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, let us sing a song. Let's sing um, Jerusalem. What page is Jerusalem on? On page 27, let us all sing together. Jerusalem. Are all the, rum the drummers ready? Ain't there somebody missing? What's the other little guy? Missing? Sleeping. All right, let's go. By the rivers of Babylon, yeah, we sat down and cried. When we remembered Jerusalem, we were sick, Lord, near to die. Ah, uh -huh. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. A land where our fathers served the Lord, the Lord our God. Our captors asked of us a song, make earth in a strange new land. But if I forget thee, Jerusalem, may I cut off my own my hand. Uh-huh, 
singing about Jerusalem. sing to the most high Jerusalem. praise the mighty king Jerusalem. Jerusalem. talking about her Jerusalem. Jerusalem. the land where our fathers Serve the Lord. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see my land. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see my land. What's the name? Peru, 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 Shalaya, Peru. I want to see my land. Clap your hands, come on. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see my land. Yeru, 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 Shalaya. Yeru, 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 Shalaya. Let's go. Hell 
help Israel, Yahuwah. Help Israel, Yahuwah. Help Israel, Yahuwah. Help Yahuwah. Page 51. Page 51. Bevakusha, Yahuwah. Bevakusha, Yahuwah. Beva kusha yahua, eh yahua, eh yahua. It's been too long. Come on, let me hear y'all sing. Come on. It's been so long, yahua. It's been too long, yahua, eh yahua, eh yahua. Sing along. Come on. Don't let the heathen defeat us. Let not the Gentile defeat us. Let your love shine, for sin so divine. Come now, my Father and leader. Hey, ah, 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 ah. Take it to the ooh, take it to the ooh. Break it down, break it down, down. Na 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 Hey, It's been too long, Yahuwah. It's been so long, Yahuwah. Too long, Yahuwah. Hey, Yahuwah. Hey, Yahuwah. Don't let the heathen defeat us. Let not the Gentiles defeat us. Let your love shine, for sin so divine. Come now, my Father and leader. Hey, I. Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Aharon and unto his son, saying, On this wise he shall bless the children of Israel. You shall say unto them, Yuvareka Yahuwah Yishmareka, Yair Yahuwah Penaweleka Wikuneka, Yisai Yahuwah Penaweleka Weyasem Maka Shalom. May your whole bless thee and keep thee. May your whole make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May your whole lift up his countenance upon thee and may he grant thee peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. We will return at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Shalom, shalom. Everyone embrace someone. Let's get all this wisdom understanding. We'll do our standing. All praises to the Most High. His laws and commandments. The hot cock Mabina here to push it through your speakers. Judgment, truth, and love should be coming from the leaders. Yeah, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. We'll do our standing. All praises to the Most High. His laws and commandments. The hot cock Mabina here to push it through your speakers. Judgment, truth, and love should be coming from the leaders. Yeah.